to bring Mass's Cup number two. We just saw Firebat win his first series, advance to the round of eight, and I'm joined by two new faces here in the analyst corner. We have Nimsh, who was just casting. We have Airblood. Aquablood? Aquablood, <laughs> sorry. I, air, I was thinking Airbrush. Aquablood. We haven't actually got a chance to work together yet, but it should be a fun time. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit, because we haven't really seen too much of you in the past. All right, so I'm Aquablood. I was here last time at the Gfinity Masters. Um... Very involved in the UK scene for Hearthstone, uh, organize events, to do a bit of casting, do a bit of playing. So, yeah, just mainly a very UK-orientated Hearthstone player and organizer. So you're, are you, you're a player first or are you an organizer first? Bit of, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades at the moment, player, caster, organizer. So, yeah, I kind of, kind of juggle between everything. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And Nimsh, uh, what do you identify as nowadays? Are you a team captain? Are you a player? Are you a caster? Uh, let's say I'm a community person. Like your uh, community guy first. I'm, I'm first. I'm still like um, a team captain of Cloud Nine, and um, mm -hmm. I'm just serving my team as, as best as possible. Right. I, I'm still playing a lot. Like I play the Sea Story Cup. I'm playing Lord of Flutter, but then my casting lot as well. So I guess like I'm a jack of all trades, kind of. Gotcha. Well, we just have very versatile people here and a Polish comedian. Our next series we have is Life Coach versus Bunny Muffins. Uh, this one's a really good matchup because. I, I actually know Bunny Muffins pretty well, personally. I've gotten a chance to work with him a lot. He actually writes a lot of cool content for Tempo Storm. And uh, I've, I've actually known him for a couple months now. Is it Bunny Muffins or Bunny Muffin? Uh, Bunny I don't Muffin? think it really matters if it's plural or singular. In this case, it's still very cute. I actually got to speak to him a lot yesterday. We watched a lot of the games from yesterday um, together, and we were just like chatting. And he seemed very knowledgeable of the game. Like he was going through some of the plays and stuff like that. Yep. Some of the things he would have done differently, or some of the stuff he agrees with. But yeah, he did. I did read up that he does write for Tempo Storm, and um, yeah, he was just saying he likes playing consistent decks. He doesn't like playing anything too gimmicky. He likes solid decks. Right. So, yeah. He's actually he, from the US, right? He, like, he is. He's originally he's from, from New York. DC. Yeah, but originally from New York, if I remember correctly. Cool. Yeah, he's really young. I think he's 17, 18 years old. Oh, One wow. of the youngest players here in this entire tournament. I mean, Firebat's usually the kid around here because he's what, he just turned 19, but Bunny Muffins is going to be one of the really young players coming in here. So uh, it's actually really cool to see him. I actually have some fa fun facts to drop about Bunny Muffins as the series progresses, but we also have a piece that we got a chance to sit down and talk with him before the tournament started. There it is. Hi, my name is Ryan Tam. I go by Bunny Muffins in Hearthstone, and I am from New York. I qualified for Gfinity's Hearthstone's uh, Spring Masters 2 through playing uh, Open Qualifier. Uh, it was actually, I think, the fourth one where there are around like 250 players. Uh, so this is actually my first ever LAN event um, as a player or as a fan. This is not my first time in London. Um, before, when I came here, I went like through all the sightseeing and all the touristy areas, but um, this time I'm just here for the Gfinity event. Um, I'd definitely like to continue with gaming and qualifying for this event and flying over here definitely really boosted like my, the confidence in myself and my ability at the game. I'm definitely here to win. I didn't take like an eight hour plane ride and like a weekend off just to come here and like lose in group stages. Um, I came here with the goal of and built all my decks around trying to finish at the top. All right, so we got an opportunity to hear him. He really wants to win. Of course, everyone coming here wants to win. I don't think anybody comes here intending to lose. So, uh, uh, yeah, actually, that, that, there's, that, huh? There's actually one player who doesn't intend to win. Kroba said he's here purely for fun. Well, I'm sure, like, fun, winning is fun to him, unless uh, losing is fun, in which case... I actually don't know how to... I mean, he'd be the scariest opponent for me then because you don't really know how to prepare for a guy like that. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Buddy Muffin, I want to drop an interesting fact here. Uh, people... So, b back when Hype went to China, uh, we didn't really have anyone do the meta snapshot. So, what happened was uh, Buddy Muffin actually volunteered to do it, but we didn't actually put his name on. We put him as an anonymous meta insider. And people for a long time speculated, who could that be? Is it someone else who maybe have done the Meta Snapshot in the past? Or is it somebody that just decided to 
uh, be cloaked and be anonymous. And actually, it was Bunny Muffin doing a lot of that meta snapshot that people really enjoyed. He's the one who in introduced the matchup tables. So he's the guy who actually provided a lot of insight into how the metagame develops. And I think that's something that people uh, were not prepared to think because they thought this guy was just never going to show his face. But it actually turned out to be him. And that's actually amazing. Like the guy who has a uh, great knowledge about the game and is mm -hmm. writing about the game, writing articles, that's a great point to start, like getting that's into right. the community. Now so, he qualified for, the, for this tournament. He knows his stuff, man. Now, of course, his opponent, Life Coach. Have we ever seen this guy before? Do we know anything about him? Well, we, I think we even seen Life Coach without a shirt, actually. So we know a lot oh, we about know him. him very intimately. That's right. I know, I know Life Coach like I know very few players because I've seen him stream uh, with and with her to shirt it off. He also actually did a, a five-minute AMA the other day. It was hilarious. He turned on his stream. He's like, all right, I'm going to do my AMA. And then he answered like two questions and turned off his stream. That was a sick AMA, I'm sure. That's right. What, what were the questions? Do you remember them? Was it, who are you? They were asking him all kinds of stuff, but of course, he, he answered like two. He realized his stream wasn't actually really stable. And then he's like, okay, bye. And then he just like logged off. And it was just five, 10 minute AMA. It was really funny. Life coach is so hilarious to be around. <laughs> like, the guy he is. He just great. does what he wants. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, he's like, but he's playing Hearthstone purely for fun. Like, because he has money, he's not playing for money. He's not playing for glory. He's playing to, to enjoy the game. And he really enjoys it. Like, whenever you meet Life Coach at those events, He's always approaching people and you're like, hey, I'm Life Coach. It's good to meet you. Like, I watch your stream or like I follow you. And um, right now, like, Life Coach was always a great player, but now um, he had really, he's really rising to power. Like, he, he won many tournaments lately and uh, he was uh, first in the world for, for a time. And I think, like, he, I, I think he really deserves to be there in the, in the top. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to cast him and, like, you know, see. It's definitely like a toss up between him and Orange at the moment as kind of the most consistent players right now. Like, those two players are. Really strong. So they, uh, they're, they're quite e well. Orange had its victory recently. So maybe if Life Coach takes this tournament, it, it becomes more level again of who's right. the top dog out of those two. So I think there's a deal going on somewhere where Orange wins every other event and Life Coach <laughs> does really well those off events yeah. too. Because Orange won Katowice, then lost by a game first round. Then he won Seed Story Cup. And now he lost first round here. So I think the next tournament Orange plays in, he's going to win for sure. It's almost Dreamhack guaranteed. Dreamhack Bucharest? Statistically. Right. Dreamhack Bucharest, actually, he's probably going to win. So put your money on that. Uh, but then this is maybe the opportunity for Life Coach to, to take one. They can go uh, two, two to two like that. Um, that'd be really cool to see for sure. I think Life Coach has yet to get, also get his first offline win. Is that correct? Or... I think that's correct. Like he won um, a couple of online events. That's and right. Offline, he got re he had a really good run at DreamHack Bucharest. He was going through the uh, group four. stages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't get an invite. He was actually going through all the stages from the very beginning of the tournament, and he got really uh, really high. He didn't win it, but then his uh, his run was actually amazing. So he has a lot of experience with the LAN events, uh, and I'm I'm definitely looking forward to his uh, success. Do we have any predictions for uh, this match? I know you guys are gonna predict that maybe Life Coach is the favorite here, but well, what are the chances for an upset? Because it but is Hearthstone. The thing is, we don't know enough about Bunny Muffin's decks and play. Like, he wouldn't tell me any of his decks, which is perfectly fine. I understand that. But Life Coach, we kind of have a feel of what, or he, what he likes to play and what decks he uses, whereas Bunny Muffin's a bit of an unknown in that department. So maybe that'll play to his advantage uh, against Life Coach now. And for Bunny Muffin, this is a really important game for him because he's on the big stage now. Mm -hmm. He's got an opportunity to take down one of the best players in the world right now. So there's a lot on the line for Bunny Muffins, whereas Life Coach, like you say, he plays this more for pleasure. Even though he's an excellent player, he may not see as much pressure. And so I think... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's in, we'll have to see what Bunny Muffins has to bring first. I mean, we can't really make a, a call on it. Well, yeah, I can't personally. There's like a lot. Oh, man. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, well, I got one vanilla answer. Nimsh, are you going to follow suit and give me a, a, a wavery answer to you're not going to pick him, buddy? Uh, yeah, I'm going to pick uh, Bunny Muffins as the winner to this match because Life Coach is a master of preparation and, and getting different setups, but then we don't know anything about Bunny Muffins. So Life Coach, if, if Life Coach would know anything, he would adjust with his decks. Um, but also, Life Coach reacts really strongly to unexpected plays. So if Bunny Muffins brought something, something new, something creative, then Bunny Muffins will have an edge versus Life Coach. If Bunny Muffins brought cookie cutter decks, the Life Coach will just go through him easily because he's really good with predicting what's happening. So okay. that's, that's, my, that's my bad. Like if there's creative, creativity, then Bunny Muffins. If not, if cookie cutters, then Life Coach will be favorite to win. All right. So Nims, you're, you're, you're 
play on both sides, but you're leaning towards bony muffins. And I know you're, you're still kind of new to this analysis thing, so I'm going to show you how to do a proper prediction so you look <laughs> like an idiot, but you look like a genius when you're right. Life Coach is going to destroy Bunny Muffins, okay? It's not going to even be close. Bunny Muffins is my boy. He actually works with me quite often. He also generates some good content. But he is so new to this stage, he is going to get rocked unless he gets the God draws because Life Coach is a player who's been on this stage so many times, and he's able to think very clearly. He will rope for sure, but I think Life Coach is going to play excellently like he usually does and he's going to wipe out Bunny Muffins. It's not going to be anything. Are you saying that Life Coach is now going to... Now would you like to make your prediction? I just gave you exactly how actually, you should Actually, actually, Nymph made a good point about Life Coach with his preparation. And after Bunny Muffins spoke to me yesterday, he actually said to me he likes consistent decks, decks that are proven that they, know, they work. So it'd be very surprising to me if Bunny Muffins brings anything quite unique and maybe strange. That's, maybe that's the red herring. He throws you off. But I, I'm guessing... This is what I'm guessing. I'm going to guess that Bunny Muffins is going to bring something like Druid because he loves that class. Class. And I think he's going to bring something like uh, like maybe the Face Hunter because it's very consistent. I think Life Coach is going to play his stuff that he really likes to play. Handlock, Paladin, Mech Mage. Mech Warrior. Mm, Mech Warrior, I don't know, man. That would be really crazy to bring in a tournament. But if he does, that's I love all it. the more reason to love Life He thinks Life it's Coach. a very good deck. And by the way, how will Bonnie Muffin react to Life Coach's BM? Because we learned oh, recently... Right. The life coach is most the most BM player in the world. He like, is because he ropes every turn, and then afterwards he's so nice to you. You can't be mad at him. Yeah, he's just rubbing it in. Mad. It's like I really enjoy the game, and uh, yeah. I think you brought good decks. You lo you lost, but. You Absolutely. played really well. I mean, you like, could use that rope as a good mind game because when the rope's going down and you, you, this new player playing against this like world-class player, you're just waiting for something to happen and you've got a minute, a minute and 30 seconds just waiting for him to either beat you or clear your board or respond to what you've done. So maybe that could add... That actually could be just a mind game that he plays with some of his opponents or most of his opponents, especially the newer ones where they have right. to just sit there and wait for something to happen to them. So have you have you picked a side yet, man? We're, we're waiting. The cast. I would say I would minutes. say life coach after after Nimch's statement and after what Bunny Muffins has spoken to me about. I would actually say life coach if he's more because I think he's going to bring bring some very predictable stuff because he likes right. the consistency. He likes right. the cookie cutter decks that are performing I well. I agree, and that, that's why I'm rooting for life coach here. And Nimch is pulling for Bunny Muffins, so maybe we will have an upset here in the start of Group C. We're going to give it over to, I believe, Caldi and Lothar, who are already over at the casting desk. Thank you, Froden, and welcome back, guys, to the caster's desk. We are here with Caldi, and we'll be casting the match between Life Coach and Bunny Muffin. So we know the exact classes for those two, play uh, for those two players. What can you say me about the Bunny Muffin's classes? So he's playing Paladin, uh, he's playing Hunter, and he's playing Warrior. Now, I think to note, if he is playing a Hunter, it's looking like it's going to be the face hunter that's been more popular recently and uh, that's going to be really strong both the paladin and the hunter are going to be really strong against the druid that uh that yeah. life coach has but I'm, I'm, I'm most interested about the warrior now warrior was conventionally only the control warrior uh which has been really popular but now there's a second type of warrior the grim patient warrior which will be really interesting I'd, well, I'd say. you're forgetting about life coach mech warrior Oh, yeah, the life coach mech warrior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, How could I forget about that one? Yeah. That's uh, actually that's a really decent deck when you go into a surprise mode, mm -hmm. when the meta game is fresh or 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 the other hand is really established. You can catch someone off guard with the mech warrior, but uh, mech, mech warrior, but the, uh, it works better in an environment, an example like Kingwin Pro League, yeah, when yeah. you specifically t um, test for one opponent prepare for one opponent. And then in a tournament, when you have a group stages and then playoffs, it's better to go with the decks that are more established, like like the Control Warrior or the Grim Patron, as you said. I think, you know, just not seeing uh, Life Coast play Mech Mage, uh, Druid and uh, the Huntlock, he's been playing all, all, all the time, it's it's really surprising, I'd say. But we're going to go into game number one now. Uh, Druid versus Paladin to start off. I, I really have to say that the Paladin is the deck to look out for here. Well, both players are playing Paladin, mm -hmm. so that's really interesting. Because uh, I think it's not like a common occurrence here at this tournament to both players bring in this, uh, the same class like Paladin. I think the overall looking at the... Uh, so it's it's Hunter, Paladin and Warrior for Bunny Muffins and yep. Warlock, Druid and Paladin for Life Coach. I think the main thing is the Druid is quite weak against Bunny Muffins lineup. Uh, well, it's it's weak to two classes, mm -hmm. two hunter and two paladin. So if he, if if life coach manages to get the druid against the 
to be paired against the warrior, then it's a really good spot because if you if you can secure that one class which is really weak against the other two classes, then you have a huge advantage. I'd say so definitely. But if you flip that around on Ben Murphy, like if he, if he has the war control warrior, he's re looking really weak against uh, life coach's lineup. As life coach does prefer handlock. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And then he has the druid and the paladin, and the druid and the paladin are, are both counters to the conventional control warrior. While it's, as a warlock, it's better bit of mismatch, but. I would guess that you know uh, Life Coach probably has more experience with the handlock than Ben Murphy has with the control warrior. As, as Life Coach really know for the handlock, knows you know. He knows his stuff. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All the ins and outs. Now, we look at this hand to begin with. Life Coach innovates swipe Belcher, Big Game Hunter. The Big Game Hunter is the weak card here, but it's really the weakest. Mm -hmm. But having the swipe, having the innovate, I think it could be quite strong. Like. You could see a turn three innovate Belcher into a turn four swipe, you know, defeating that uh, Master of a Battle. Yeah, that's true. Well, still, the Master of a Battle shouldn't be a problem until turn four, five, so you can always manage to just, you know, swipe whenever you, you're feeling um, there might be a Quartermaster incoming, so you just swipe it right to the, the turn before that. Mm -hmm. Nourish. No. Yes, that's a, that's a tech that uh, we use uh, really often in our team, but it goes in and out, so sometimes we, we skip the Nourish, it depends on the metagame. And life coach just loves the card. Then a helium card, I suppose, and do it there. But now looking at this matchup, I think the main thing is that Paladin likes to be the aggressor, uh, and and the Druid, if it goes, you know, to to fatigue, I suppose the Druid has a slight edge. But other than that, I mean, the Druid is looking really rough, and and I guess the main main point behind that is, you know, there's the Aldor, there's the True Silver, there's the Tempo card that the Paladin has, but. So, so Druid is really looking for that, yeah, that ramp up and, and getting ahead early. So, uh, yeah, the Nourish is achieving that. And the um, interesting fact is that when you innovate the Nourish, you still get two two mana uh, mm -hmm. back, so you can use the Hero Power to utilize, uh, utilize this. And we just saw that because he managed to destroy the Divine Shields from the uh, from the mini bot, which is kind of important uh, because those. Druid has problems with uh, creatures that have, that have bought 2 HP. Yeah. Like, well, basically three. Mm -hmm. So you can think of Minibot as a creature with two additional points of HP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think the thing to note here is that the, uh, the Druid, turn one, turn two, and turn three are the crucial turns. Because with Paladin, with Sue, with all these classes, if they can get three minions on board and then buff them with, like, you know, Let's say power roaming or, or have an outdoor, you know, def defeat that. So it, it really go goes kind of far with that. If there's a th the three, Let turn one, turn three, turn, uh, turn one, and uh, turn two and three in there, yeah. it really just. The, you get too far ahead, I suppose. That's true. That's true. Well, now the Belcher seems to be a really great drop. Uh, Lyco doesn't know there are two quick silvers, uh, I mean, two, two, two silver champions um, in Bandit Muffin's hand, but. I feel I feel like the Belcher is still the best option here. Otherwise, you will have to commit to Wrath, and basically that's it. The thing is, yeah, these these spells aren't really ideal against a small board. The Fortune Nature and the Big Game Hunter are definitely late game cards. You don't really want to be having now. Uh, I, I think I like the Belcher here. Like Belcher into Wrath and, and uh, swipe on next turn should be able to clear. Uh, the, it's a bit awkward is, though, yeah. yeah. It is awkward because you will lose um, the Belcher to this Rosable Champion. And, mm. and the Palta Trailer will still be intact. So you have to use the Wrath on the Palta Trailer, which is um, kind of awkward. When we go back to that though, three weapons in Bunny Weapon's hand can also be really, really rough, I suppose, because you obviously can't yeah, play them all at right, once. Right. And, and the Big Game Hunter as well, if you look at that. So there's a Big Game Hunter in both hands, you know, generally no big targets until turn 7 with a Dr. Boom, mm -hmm. which none of them have, so... Yeah, awkward all around. I'd, I'd give the favor to Life Coach, like, looking at because of the Nourish. If he can manage to draw into Ancient of War, I would oh, give him the, the uh, you upper sure hand. You sure he plays Ancient of War? I wouldn't say so. <laughs> he prefers to play the I guess he aggressive, the yeah. aggressive decks, so he, 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 he kind of... No, no, almost uh, always cast the Ancient of War. Oh, you meant, I meant the Ancient of Lore there. Oh, Lore, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, but Ancient of Lore would be insane. That will be like the best drop Let right now. And now we have turn four. I think, I mean, there's, there's merit for the True Silver, the Master, and the Aldor here. I, I, I don't think I like the Aldor. I think it's uh, at the moment between True Silver and the Master. 
Well, if he goes for the uh, Masterful Battle, it's so weak against Spike. Move it's quickly. basically, I think the Masterful Battle might be the worst case, uh, worst, uh, worst play to, keep, to make here. So I like the Crucible Champion. It's way better to utilize this early on. We have a target to shoot for it. Five HP. Uh, if you have a board state. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think that was definitely the right play. But the Keeper is so good here. It's unbelievable against that uh, Shredder. I think no matter what's coming down, I think the Keeper will be the start. The, the problem is you want to keep the Keeper for the Tyrion uh, for mm -hmm. which will come down at, well, hmm. in four turns. Yeah. And the, it's, we know that there's uh, no Forger in, in uh, Panama Muffin's hand. So it's now the question, do you want to make a board which will be dying, to, which will die to Druid Silver Champion? Because, you know, Druid wants to get something on board every single turn. So that's the problem now, because even if you play something, it will die. It's about every other Paladin plays Dr. Boom now. Some of them are cutting it for like a, a Paladin Sky Column or Cairn or something like that to play around, so there's no big game target. So you want to be keeping the big game hunter for the Dr. Boom, you want to be keeping the Silence for the yeah. Tyrion, and you want to be keeping the Swipe for the Muster, so... It's really rare. Yeah, one. technically, I think you have to throw the Keeper out here, because you also don't want to be wasting a, a point of danger unless you're ahead and, and killing it. But that's like the best minion to get, I suppose, among them here. Uh, yeah, everything else will die to, to rap. I suppose there's a few, but yeah. For the big game hunter. Wow, that's awesome. I think it's the right way to go, though. It's desperation, as he is behind due to the lack of value here, but... Now the Peacekeeper will be used, most likely. I, I suppose, yes. Yeah. So, so you'd kill the Keeper of the Grove, I suppose, and then use the Aldor on the on the big game hunter with a hero, hero power? power yeah. yeah, I would say that it's, that's the play here. Mm -hmm. Let me think. It is low value for the True Slipper, but it, with the True Slipper you, you take what you can get, I suppose, especially when you have two. I don't two. think it's low value. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's uh, one card. So you, True Silver Champion means you just you just trade it for two cards. And I think that's okay. Yeah, def it definitely. What you, yeah, yeah. It doesn't really matter how much damage it is, how, uh, what's the nature of the Let card you just, you just destroyed. It's just matter if it's a card or if it's not another card. If an example, if you would kill a token like from a bad mm -hmm. hero power, yeah, that will be really low value. But if it's just a card that was playing for hand, it's great. For sure here. I, I think with him having so many charges of the weapons, he will also have to use it, you know, no matter what, every yeah. turn. Uh, so I think it's not even an op option for that. Now he, he does, does go... go for the he's thinking about maybe a muster or something, but... Yeah. I would have thought if he's gonna muster, he would want to keep the big hunter alive, because, you know, the... Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, tokens, I, I suppose. Reporting for two. Not sure I like this. This is also very vulnerable to swipe. Which yeah, I don't like this either. It is very, very slow, I would say. Mm -hmm. And you want to be as fast as possible against the druid. If you if you manage to squeeze the board control against the druid, you basically win. I think the thing to note here is like if he has the swipe, you're behind, so you don't you, you don't want to be behind, of course. And if you're playing this advantage, you have to be behind. So. If he doesn't, if he isn't behind next turn, you can't really play the Sylvanas for value. So it's be behind to be behind, and it, you kind of blame blame him behind. I suppose with that, I, I think it also, I, I'd say it's a good chance that he will have to use the Trucer next turn, you know, and then he's just throwing away the weapon, the one four. I mean, it's not crucial, but it's better than nothing. So I think getting the Trucer out first and then going for the small weapon would be a more ideal here. Well, Life Coach doesn't play the swipe instantly, he just goes for a grab for one to cycle because he is su in such a dire need to put something in his hand. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree with that. I think, I think he was always going to swipe, no matter what, but he was, yeah, just thinking yeah, maybe he could draw into something like an Ancient of Lore, an ancient of lore for next turn or something. But and next turn he has Keeper of the Grove and Sludge Bulger, which is okay. He will most likely. Uh, have, he will most likely have to use that keeper on the grove for this next turn Sylvanas. It will come down. I would at least I would say that this will be the card to come down on 10-6. I have no time mm -hmm. for games. There's some merit as opposed to Force of Nature, uh, but overall I think it depends on the next draw. This is not ideal though, as the as the stop belt is really weak to that. Well, the Drake is unfortunate. He just used the swipe and the wrap. Mm -hmm. For the value, at least I think the swipe was fine without it, but. Uh, it, it's 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 good though. Like, imagine he would draw something like I suppose yeah, uh, 
again an in innovate or something, mm -hmm. you know, because he wants to get the value and he gets to draw the Drake now. I wonder. I think you actually will have to go for the Drake and see what you get. But then it's um. I mean, solo it, Drake is um. He's, he's already seen one true slipper, so that's at least one thing to consider. Mm -hmm. Obviously, life codes, you know, can't be really playing on the two true, true slippers and keeping that track until turn yeah, 12, yeah, 12 or something, I suppose. So, well, let's let's um, see what ca what can he draw with Azure Drake, which will be impact impactful this turn. It will have to be a four drop, so a Falcon oh, Shredder, for yeah. example, and he didn't see one yet. Doctor Boom. Well, that's not a that's a, not a drop for this turn. So you have to commit to the second keeper, which yeah, is so. kind of okay. Yeah, with that with that uh, Asher Drake, his hand got dramatically better. In value, we'll, we'll put him behind last turn as the fortunate doesn't get mm -hmm. immediate value. And uh, on on this board, because you don't want to be trading with it, you want to be keeping it for the combo lethal. Now, uh, looking at this, this is really awkward. I think no matter what, the true slip is coming down. So I think maybe like True Silver, mm. Shambit to Hero Power, Big Pie Strong. What about the Peacekeeper? You have the answer to the mm, to any big drop that will draw it, um, use like a Dr. Boom. You have the Big Game Hunters, you don't, you don't need that Peacekeeper for that. Mm -hmm. And a free free body is a really great uh, threat against uh, against the Druid. He, he used one ramp, mm. he used Swipe. So what can you use at a, uh, at a free HP minion? So the idea here is then, do you uh, Peacekeeper the Drake? Which you can then kill with a uh, weapon, or you, I guess you could you could peace keep the Drake, kill the, both of the key, uh, keep of the groves, as there's no silence. But then the spell power still alive. As it I, goes. I would say it's um, mm. keeper the Drake, mm -hmm. kill the Drake of the Sylvanas, oh, play the Drusel of the Champion, kill one of the keepers. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's yeah, it's between the uh, one four with spell power or the two four without spell power. So this is strong, I suppose, especially since we know he has a big game. Yeah. Well, the bombs might still win the game. Oh, that's a good draw also, but now when you see that board, I think you have to go for Dr. Boom, because you can't be behind as a druid. Mm -hmm. Your only comeback mechanism, mechanism is a Force of Nature Savage Roar, and you only have Force of Nature, so you're kind of lacking the um The bulk the impact, of that combo, yeah, the, I suppose. Strength, yeah. Right? So we see, we see seeing Dr. Boom, I suppose, and I wouldn't hate, you know, just killing the outdoor there. But the thing is now, Bunny Muffins, he's all, he hasn't seen that many cards from Life Coach. I mean, he doesn't have this huge seven card hand, which you often get after the Instant of Lore, where you can basically guarantee that he has the combo. He has been almost, you know, close to top deck with two or three cards every, every turn now. I'll oh. have heads up play with Ancient of War, something I wouldn't have done. Wow! Azure Drake and Swipe. That's. that's Devastating, yeah. Yeah, that's really sick. But now you can plan differently. Life coach spent like 60 seconds to think about what he will do this turn, and he went for the Ancient Ball and he drew the exact two cards that changed his strategy completely. Mm -hmm. I have to say, regarding this this play, like I think I would have gone for the tempo play, which would be Doctor Boom here, mm -hmm. uh, as. Let's say you 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 know we have two cards in hand. You know you want the variety, I suppose, in the next play turn. But he had you know he had t cards to last him two or three turns at least. So uh. yeah, that's also really. <laughs> but it's kind that's of really of funny. He just uh, Banamuffin just drew the Kazan Mystic, mm -hmm. and he knows it has no impact at all I mean, against oh, yeah. Life Coach because Life Coach plays well. Okay, you can have Secrets in Paladin, but uh, very let's not kid ourselves yeah. here, right? Mm -hmm. So he can actually drop the Kazan Mystic as a body and not. Be, uh, and not worry about giving information because oh, yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. This is really, yeah. He says every single card is really like. Let me <laughs> so what situation do you, knowledge opposed? I, I think you have to drop Zombie Chow as a Mystic Hero Power yeah. and kill the, um, kill the kill the Ancient of Lore and the Keeper of the Grove. I think you may want to hold on to the weapon for the Keeper uh, as you aren't really dying to combo. You know, uh, so that, that's my thinking. I think I would keep the weapon, but this is safer. I mean, let's say he has you know double combo with a so savage or force nature innovate for yeah. uh, savage or. Well, you saw one innovate, so mm -hmm. the odds of that are it's very wow. very low. Yeah, that's second big game hunter. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, that explains very well why he played it on turn three there. Mm -hmm. 
I suppose. Uh, well, it was still okay to play the Big Game Hunter, even if that's your sole uh, solo Big Game Hunter in your deck. Mm -hmm. But now he, we know that he plays two. Wow. This is like an auto win, I would say, against Warrior, for example. Uh, yeah, I would say. Oh, I would say so. But now he has both Wrath and Swipe in his hand. This is insane against Paladin. This is just insane. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> now it has no impact next turn because. Bannemarfen will have to play the low duplic instantly from his head. I think he also will have to owl the uh, Belcher. But I think, yeah, this is rough. The Belcher is still a great card. Even as it's just simple, 3 5, it trades for the uh, Kazan Mystic and something else. Mm -hmm. I think he will be forced to probably trade into the Azure Drake. What uh, about the quality here? It's not bad, but. So you use Silence first, then play quality. And you have still the, the uh, loader. The thing is that the slime will be really painful then, you know, that comes from the uh, slot culture there. No, 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 you can silence first. You can silence first, I suppose, but it's, it's just a lot of commitment, I suppose, uh, in that case. So he goes for the quality without the owl. So we'll see. Oh, what? Wow. Let's. Um... Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't. I mean, consider, consider you owl the slot culture there. It fades with the Kishan into the Azure yeah. Drake. Then you have three minions on board against one Belcher, you know. Actually, you have four minions on board against one Belcher, you know. So... I, I, I didn't like that at yeah. all. I didn't like that at all. Mm -hmm. Druid is at healthy 30 points of HP. He has the board advantage. He has the... Well, the board advantage will just shift. But he has the card advantage too. And he has the retroactive cards, but the, that those are instantly affecting the board. Lex, Wipe and Wrath. But we see a huge draw here, the Tyrion. This is so... <laughs> but you can't play it now. Yeah, if it's, you play it's it now, a, it's you the can't, worst turn, yeah. yeah you, you can't play the big game hunter. I think the thing to consider about last turn is, you know, equality is a combat card, you know. While Owl is not as much of a combat card. Owl is kind of the card oh. where you, if you're ahead on the board, you can stay ahead on the board by, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Owling the big taunt, or you can Owl the Sylvanas or something. So I think the Owl was much more expendable when, you be, when you're behind, I suppose. But now, it, that, if that bomb would have deal, dealt more damage mm -hmm. than one, yeah. it would change the whole strategy. Oh, because wonder. what is Panamaf thinking? Does he have the combo? He has so many cards in hand, he most likely has the combo. So I have to kill every single creature. And if, if the bomb would, uh, would deal three points to the face mm -hmm. instead of one, that would be lethal with the combo. It, it would. I think maybe one thing is considering, you know, because when you're behind, you would need to take more risks because you're behind, because you're not going to win if you just play safe mm -hmm. when you're behind. So maybe he was thinking that, you know, he may need to take more risks. But I think in hindsight, I would like Tyrion better there. I don't know. If Life Coach would have Savage here, he would just go face with everything mm -hmm. and then finish the game off with his wipe. Yeah, he's That's not been it. repping the Savage Roar at all. It's been kind of, you know, uh, just controlling the board and, and being the. the he still has a great turn. Ancient of Law into whatever, mm -hmm. and then you innovate Swipe, Swipe the Lotef, and trade the bomb for the Big Game Hunter. I think that's great. Yeah, I, I really like that. He's kind of unfortunate. He did draw two Force of Nature, <laughs> I mean Force of Nature, mm -hmm. and he's still lacking the Big Game Hunter. Uh, Savage, sorry, what I'm talking about. And um, Force of Nature, yeah. yeah. Now the Tyrion might be a problem. Because it's a huge body, we know that two keepers were played, so there's no other answer to the um, unless be, um, Black Knight. I think you'll actually have to, just have to go for um, you know wrath. Yeah, maybe just wrath, force nature down, and just go face. Yeah, that, that's a good play. Mm -hmm. That's a good play. So but I would just probably draw him first. Yeah, yeah with the to wrath see what there. was going on, right? And then probably I guess wild growth here. What about two pilot traders here? It's, yeah, it's, it's playable, especially since you've seen the quality already, so you're not afraid yeah. of the quality, but I so think... you can play two Shredders past turn. You could, yeah. yeah. Right? You you saw one equality, most of the Paladins are playing now one equality, you didn't see any Consecrations yet. Mm -hmm. So what you can assume is that even if a Consecration comes down, it kills one of the Paladin Shredders, Paladin Shredders because there's one Recruit that can trade for the Shredder, but still, two creatures are you know, on the board, and you have no chance of activating your weapon because there's no creature with six attack. I think a thing to consider here is that we have two forces and you have no Savage Roar, so the Force Nature is extremely expandable here. 
And another thing, if you are Paladin with a 5 damage weapon and you only have 10 health, you can't really use the weapon mm -hmm. effectively, you know. Yeah. I, I still like this, this uh, more mm -hmm. than the Force of Nature. I mean, in either case, you know, like, Batman official need to draw, you know, really, really strong cards back to back here to have a chance mm -hmm. anyway. And if there's a Savage Sword drawn, it's just game over, you know, um, no matter what happens after that. So, Aldor, not too bad. I think, you know, you could go Hero Power, you could go for the Quartermaster, and you could go for the Aldor. Hmm. Peacekeeper is really great. So yeah. I think you just go Peacekeeper, Hero Power, Quartermaster. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think I think that'd be strong. Well, Owl is great too because you can kill the one pilot Shredder without any death rattles. It's it's kind of hard, I guess, now to mm. to assume for Bunny Muffins, you know. But he, he Life Coach hasn't been repping a Savage Sword at all, so he, Bunny Muffins may actually just want to go face. If so, I, I think what I would do here, where I would start with the Hero Power, I would then go for the Quartermaster and trade into the Pilot Shredder, mm -hmm. see what I get out of that with the the token there. Uh, yep. and. Mm. If it's something that's, you know, like a flame tongue totem, you could you tra trade into it. But if not, I just go face, honestly. But always do the RNG first now here. Okay, so he, he goes safe, I would say. This is... I don't know. I would even mention to say this is just weaker. Because you could get a 3-3 three, three from the hero power. It's between Owl or 3-3. Three, three, oh, know. there's a Savage Roar. And yeah, yeah, we're, you're right. This is actually just lethal here. Yeah, yeah it's lethal. Because you have exact, exact, exact lethal. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would it change? Would it change if uh, he would go for another type of play? He would, have lost, so, he would right? have lost either way, but I think you would have yeah. a better chance if he'd gone for the hero power instead of the owl to right, come back. Right. You know, if there's no savage roll, I suppose. But life got taking game one here, and, and he was the he was not favored in this matchup at all. Mm -hmm. So this is a really important win for Life Coach, and uh, now he knows his uh, his Druid is secured, so he doesn't have a good matchup against the Warrior, because... Well, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's, the let's Hunter and the Paladin yeah. don't have a good matchup against the Druid, I suppose, but the yeah. Druid is kind of a class that's kind of well-rounded. It has several weaknesses, you know, but with how it's structured with the uh, Innovate and the Wild Growth and the Ramp, if you draw all your ramp, you can just get way ahead, you know, even in an unfavored matchup. So the matchups don't go as as completely the opposite way as something like a control warrior versus freeze mage, you know. Yeah, which is like an 80-20, but you know, the mm -hmm. druid matchups maybe 65-35, you know. So yeah, you yeah, have, yeah, always have true. the chance, yeah. Yeah. And I mean with life codes having innovate into into the nervous, it's just a crazy swing there for that. Uh, that's that's true. He was like two wild groves ahead. That's insane. And now, life coach has paladin and warlock. So I would say bunny, uh, bunny muffin will go with the hunter. Mm -hmm. It's a bit safe bet because if it's um, handlock, your hunter will do great. Mm -hmm. If it's zoo, your hunter will do great, unless it's a midrange hunter. And hunter against paladin is also great. I think the thing to consider is that uh, life coach is an excellent handlock player if he's playing handlock here, and he has a tendency to draw a lot of heal bots and. I know this from experience, when I face him, I, he tends to get both his heal bots. Uh, I, I get my burn classes, so... But I think now Bunny Muffin's best chance would be the three or the Paladin. The Hunter should be really strong against the Paladin, then you have the Mirror Match, and then you have the Warrior, which if it's a Grim Patient Warrior, he's heavily favored there, so... Yeah, that's true, like the OTK Warrior basically auto-wins mm -hmm. against Warlocks, um, the, the of course Contra Warrior, uh, Contra Warlocks, like Handlock, mm -hmm. or like um, late game Demon Locks, yeah. something like that. So we'll have to see what will be the next deck from Pan and Muffin, but I would say for Life Coach it will be no difference at all. He can just roll the dice, pick one of the decks, that makes no difference at all. Yeah, I think yeah, Pan and Muffin should go for the most favored matchup against the Warlock, because the Warlock would be the threat now. The Paladin is, is the deck that Life Coach really desperately wants to get a win with, so if he can you know, get a medium matchup and... and mm -hmm. I think I think this will be the most crucial one. Will be the Paladin versus Paladin that comes up here. Yeah. Paladin versus Paladin. This is, that, that's one of the matchups that you can't really predict mm -hmm. unless someone has two consecrations and then quality. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to make a comeback as a Paladin when the board is really, really, really uh, big. Unless you got that uh, that that uh, that combo of equality. It's one of the few matchups where uh, Zombie Chow is like dramatically important and. Getting that early stuff is more important than getting the late stuff, I suppose. You know, Com yeah, that's compared true. to the, uh, I guess when you're playing against the uh, or playing with the, with the shaman, you 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 wouldn't really want the zombie chow there against stuff like the druid, etc. So, 
Mm -hmm. I think it'll just come down to who gets stabilize first and, and get the knife juggler rolling or get oh, yeah, the knife weapons. juggler. I forgot yeah. about that card. If you get the knife juggler with mass massive for battle, this can mm -hmm. be game breaking. Absolutely board here. position. Yeah. But I think I can consider if he's playing hunter, if he's playing the mid range hunter, he's in trouble here I'd say so But who plays mid range hunter, right? Nine I suppose, but not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh shots fired. Uh, well maybe the viewers don't know but Naiman got banned yesterday, so hot news. Mm -hmm. Latest scoop here, I suppose. Uh, but now, I, th I think I'm, I'm really leaning for life coach now after this one. Even if if Bunny has, you know, a strong paladin against paladin, you know. What what if life coach is playing zoo? Or maybe that would be really mid interesting. Yeah. Mid range warlock. That would actually that then then it would be favorite Bunny, I say. Even though life coach is one away, because I mean the Crimpation warrior is, is really really strong against the zoo. Mm -hmm. uh, the hunter is really strong against the zoo. I'd say. I actually prefer Sue. Which one would you prefer? You're playing face hunter. Would you prefer facing Sue or handlock? I would say I would prefer facing Sue. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree Explosive with that, Trap yeah. has more impact on the board and uh, Unleash the Hounds has more value. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait until your opponent drops the Giants because that's the usual um, state of the board when you can actually play the Unleash the Hounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we, don't, we know that that's not the case. It's a handlock, double Ancient Watcher. And it's against Paladin. So this is a matchup, I would say, Warlock is favored, especially with the Hellfire already in the hand. Absolutely. Yeah, the Ancient Watcher is also going to be crucial, I think. I, I would think that uh, Life Coach would definitely throw away the Belcher and the second Ancient Watcher, but I could see him keeping one Watcher here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in reference, you know, I would I would guess that he would know Life Coach's playstyle and that he tends to go hunt lock if he'd done his research here, but I, th I think he probably does. But yeah. uh, we have to consider that but many of us is from North America and, and Life Coach is EU, so they may not have as but, much of you know, uh, yeah. It doesn't require so much research, it's basically Life Coach trademark. Yeah, he I can suppose. wear a robe and be a <laughs> warlock. Robe coach, I suppose. Now, looking at this, you know, uh, Nav Juggler into Cockhammer is, is amazing and keeping the Peacekeeper is good as well. Oh, I like he didn't keep any of the Ancient Watchers. He didn't, okay. It's interesting. Maybe he wants the Owl with it, I suppose. If he kept the Owl with uh, Ancient Watcher and Owl, that would have been strong now. Mm -hmm. We saw Benefits throw away the Coghammer. An amazing uh, card against Sue, but bad against Handlock. So I think Benefits is onto this. Uh, mm -hmm. A really strong hand, actually, but the Harrison <laughs> is not something you want early on. <laughs> Double big game Hunters in, <laughs> in What's Black going Coach on Handlock, here? too. What's going on? I don't know. Everyone uh, is almost, almost everyone is playing um, aggro decks, mm -hmm. and Life Coach brings double big game hunters in both pal uh, druid and warlock. I suppose he's maybe thinking, okay, if I face a warrior, you know, he just I, wants to kill yeah. one deck with his whole lineup. Mm -hmm. right? So he just trades in one card mm -hmm. and gets a free win, you know, with mm -hmm. druid there. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you go for here? Do you go for the knife juggler or the shield mini bot here? Uh, I would say it's the knife juggler this turn. Mm -hmm. You can't really. If you want to deal some damage, it's from the start of the game. Then yeah. you have to stop at some point. You have to play this like Peter Gonzalez, I suppose, yeah. Uh, really be in a rush against Huntlock. The thing is, if he has a Dark Bomb, he could possibly go for it, but he also wants to life tap. Yeah. So I, I, I like this Nachuglu here. Now you can just play double minions. I think I think you have to do that, yeah. There's a little bit mini yeah. bot on the Shambi Chow. You also get a Hunter Heal Power for free. Mm -hmm. The only scenarios, I guess, where you. This is yeah, yeah well, dramatically favorable for the Huntlock, I suppose. So the scenario that you're gonna lose to a Paladin is when he gets like three minions or four minions, and you can't really deal with them with an AOE, and then there comes a silence, and he throws an equality in them, then he just dead. A lot of that. Yeah. yeah. So a pure temple play, mm -hmm. yeah. aggressive Paladin play. That's yeah. it. Yeah, for sure. And and his hand is actually like decent, I'd say. Life coach, yeah. Well, I Drake will be met with um, Peacekeeper, I would say. There's no taunts though, so... And the quality, quality, wow, quality, this wow. hand is sick from Burning Muffin. This might sick. be turned around now. Yeah, I mean, let's say he goes for the Aldor though. If he goes for the Aldor, then it's really bad for him. It, Life Code will pop the Divine Shield, play the Hellfire. Mm -hmm. If he goes for the Palted Shredder, then Life Code will mm -hmm. go for the same play, but he will pop the Palted Shredder with his Twilight Drake, which will still have four attack, and still play the Hellfire, which will um, keep his Twilight Drake alive, but the mini bot will be dead. Uh, will be also alive. I think the summer, you know, quality is generally a card you'd want for later, 
And I mean, he hasn't been wrapping a Hellfire support like was by calling out the Drake. That would be more likely a second Drake incoming. So mm -hmm. maybe he could think about a quality and throwing the zombie chair in. I think like knowing that there's a Hellfire, that would be the best play if you know it's a Hellfire. But he obviously has there's no way of knowing that. Yeah. Well, it, it, when he plays the one of the creatures, he can still hit the Twilight Drake with the juggle, and that will change the board dramatic, dramatically. Mm -hmm. I think. Without knowing the hand, Aldor and trading in is probably best. This is strong as well. Yeah. will be at 18 points of life. This oh, is and there's the anti kill bot, which is was crucial, I think, when you have no taunts. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, but, yeah, I think like not knowing the hand, it would be best to go for the Aldor and trade in. You know, because you aren't really in a position where you can go for the, the he had huge quality play yet. You need like a weapon going, and etc. But. Mm -hmm. Some matter to going harsh, I suppose. It's a great late game card, but hmm. uh, against Jaraxxus? Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think you can pull out, pull that off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very unlikely, especially because you need to be in a hurry while you're behind now. But yeah, well, who who will play Jaraxxus at turn nine against a paladin? You need that, I think. You can just drop yeah, it's, every it's, other creature just yeah, for it, face. It's really a desperation when you actually come to that. There would be some sort of, you know, counter to Tyrion or something that you'd need yeah, to go yeah, for that. Maybe. But a lot of them do play Harrison. I think Harrison is the way to go here. But now if we look at what possibilities Lifeguards has, I think Silencing his own Drake who might actually be the best play. <laughs> That's funny. That is. That's actually funny. Now it will the, be 4-1, yeah. but it will trade for the Harrison Jones. So yeah, yeah, that, that's... Uh, a rare occurrence, I'd say, yeah. You're very right. Maybe the less experienced viewers will not know, but the effect effect of, of the Peacekeeper is silenceable. So mm -hmm. if you use the Owl on your minion that was um, following the rules uh, of the Peacekeeper, then it's then it goes back to, an, to its initial attack state. It actually puts him to one health now. Uh, and But there is a Mountain Giant, so there's a possibility, I suppose, of uh, playing that Mountain Giant out. He could tap and go for the owl and clear he isn't really in the danger of dying here i suppose so i think maybe mountain giant is better but it also keeps him safe against Tyrion and sylvana so i think in general i think mountain giant would be the way to go he probably will go for that he has the anti kill but he has the molten giant so he doesn't really care about the damage for now and uh, what what is he thinking about is what are the chances of your of my opponent having big game hunter? Yeah. That's the only reason why would why wouldn't you play the big, uh, the the mountain giant here? And you have the shadow flame, but you have no no target to shadow flame, so that's the problem. When when there's a big game hunter going down uh, right now, the board state will be kinda kinda threatening to life coach. Mm -hmm. For sure here, uh, there is man actually to go in cockham. You can kill the yeah. one two when you can. Uh, do a lot of damage to the mountain and just even go face. I think face may be a bit, bit too, you know, ambitious. Too straight, too straightforward. Mm -hmm. He will be at 13, so you can play Molten Giant, even two, yeah. if you want. But I, I don't think Life Code will commit so much to the board when he knows there might be an equality in the hand. Mm -hmm. There should be uh, at least one in most Paladin decks, I suppose. But yeah. now, what Life Code really wants to have happen is, you know, it plays one minion out the for one minion, and you keep going, keep going, keep going until like turn nine where you just win, you know. For uh, Bandai Muffin, it's really unfortunate that, he, that his mana efficiency dropped below average after turn four. Yeah, he used Peacekeeper mm -hmm. on turn four, so mm -hmm. he was slacking one point of mana. On turn five, he used um, Harrison. Harrison, so that was, that was okay. But it's under Q when it comes to stats, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And then six, turn six, you can play Palter Trader and Coalcamer at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's really unfortunate how this is panning out. And we talked about Life Coach. The way he's going to win this is just you know trade one minion at a time into into things like you know now he, he could go yeah Belcher, he could go Sylvanas or something, but to stabilize. Uh, but while it's, uh, Bunny Mephis, his way would be like he did it in the first few turns, get four minions going, you know, and, and keep that board and clear and, and you know, eventually burst so down, but yeah. yeah. What, what do you think about playing Belcher, killing the 1-1 one -one with your Drake, and then killing the Harrison Jones? Because you, you have a taunt which basically declines whatever will the departure do, and you're not in fear of equality because your your giant is at three points of life, and Equality doesn't really matter at that point. It's it's the safest play here. There's also merit, I suppose, to, to go in face. 
I, I suppose, you know, trading into the sweater with the Mountain Giant, uh, silencing the Drake, killing the Harrison, and then going for a Molten Giant with that. Hmm. Yeah, that's also interesting. You can also I pop the Palted Shredder and shut the Flaming Giant. That's actually a good point. But I don't think that's usable. You could actually have... Uh, I have no time. Yeah, you could, you could have... Okay, okay. I, I think I got the play here. You go for the... Uh, you pop the Shredder with the Giant, then you silence the Twilight Drake and shut the Twilight Drake for six mana. <laughs> okay. I yeah, think that that's actually... Yeah, I think that, that would have been it. That, that's, that's also okay, but... Uh, he might use that next turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll yeah. have to see. I think this is, yeah... This Sylvanas was really a good mm. drop, because... <laughs> it will take the drop from the Palted Shredder, I mean the Death Rattle effect, uh, because the Sylvanas was played after the Palted Shredder, and the, the order of Death Rattles is being... Um, is being cast the way it, the, the cards were played on board. So first the Paltrader, then the Sylvanas. Easy. So that's really important inf information for, for the viewers, I think. And uh, he can't play Cockhammer too, because if you put Divine Shield on your minion, then it's basically untouched after the, the Sylvanas will die, and you give him, you know, full value. Mm -hmm. it, it denies every play except like bursting face with a weapon, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that's what Life Coach wants, because Life Coach has both a taunt and he has a heal, which probably would have become the heal first, you know. But I think if I was Penny uh, Weapons, I would literally go Cockhammer and just face. Oh, he goes for the for the Doctor Boom, yeah. and Life Coach has two big game hunters. If you're if you're trading now, there's there's no comeback mechanic to that. You're just yeah. gonna lose, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's true. I would like, as you said. The Gonkhammer phase was the best option here. It's desperate, but it, it, yeah, you gotta take chances, you know, of him having absolutely nothing, which is what Penny has had to do there. A three to face, oh, that's something. Oh, wow. But now the Molten Giant is free. He is, yeah. But there's no taunt up for it, so... Well, you have a Belcher in his hand. Yeah. Who cares? But you I mean, he, he would he probably want to shadow him now, I suppose. Well, you, have, you want to play the big Hunter this turn. So you have to count the damage that, that uh, the Paladin can do. He can so play the True Silver Champion days. and then Consecration. That's six points of damage. Mm -hmm. If the bombs, if the bomb will not attack phase and it will go into a minion and deal four damage to the phase, then you win. There's a lot of yeah. There's a possibility of running the Sylvanas into the Hunter Creepers, going for a Mortal Call to draw and then drawing it up. What about, Shadow Flame, yeah? Yeah. what about just killing the Hunter Creeper, Shadow Flame, Molten Giant? You could, but you probably want to draw the mortal, mortal Coil, so you could possibly get like, something like a Taunt, Sun Fury, etc. Because uh, then you could Taunt both of the... the uh, Dr. Boom and the... Uh... We'll have to see. This I is... think the... Uh, uh, not sure about that. Uh. That was... Oh, wow! This is a mistake, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so, too. You died to Thrush of a Consecrate. Yeah, that's what I said. That's the maximum burst that can Paladin do, and it was the exact scenario that, that mm -hmm. can happen now. Yeah, like, let's, let's consider if he'd gone for uh, Sylvanas, uh, Mortal Coil one of the one ones, mm -hmm. go for Molt and, and then blow it up. I mean, you have have more health as a potion, you have... Uh, yeah, Life Code is definitely uh, twitching after that turn. He, mm -hmm. he wasn't fully um, happy with the outcome of that. Absolutely here. Uh, and I now think he, he kind of lacked the time to... Mm -hmm. You know, count the op the opportunities more to to see what what are the outcomes, what are the odds of happening. So he kind of roped himself. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Now he knows that the only only scenario can happen when he actually will lose. But after thirty seconds of nothing being, mm -hmm. there were like four or five knows, viable yeah. options there to go, and and all of them had his merits. But I think like. If, if he's gonna go for this route, he could have just silenced the uh, bomb just to be safe, you know. Because you're not gonna burn into yeah. trouble with, 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 with value with Tyrion at this point, but... I think I would have gone... Like, I think I like, hammer best here, just hammer face. You, you won't be going face, you don't want to be trading here. I don't like this. Yeah, like... There's, there's no way they're just gonna be going into the value game here. And, uh, also, you can go for the master battle. No, wait, wait I'm, I'm, I'm off that. <laughs> well, this sucks, I would say. Yeah. I mean, there was some merit, I suppose, if you go Cockhammer, and you can go for a quality contract later if you get it. That'd be the, one of the few scenarios I would see. Y you, um, now it's the question Does Life Coach think that there's a quartermaster? You, you can't risk that, right? 
You can't you risk. You can't know. Yeah. That's the only scenario now that you can lose to because you know there's no true silver champion and there's no cross decoration because they, that will be used with the quality, right? And now you see the only thing that can stop you, which is quartermaster with five minions. I, I know the life codes tend to, I suppose, go two hellfire, one shadow flame, right? I think so. That's the most common setup. It seems like he's gonna shadow flame at least now. Yeah, good choice here. Hmm. Oh, but that's the first time I actually see shadow flaming on one, one, one creature. Oh, <laughs> that's quite funny. Yeah, very, very, very current share. I think you go for the zombie tail as well, but now uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. You, you go for the zombie. Oh wait. Well, Maybe he's still thinking just to trade into a uh, one one. Or yeah, that's right. Yeah, that makes sense. For very low value, but this is yeah. I mean, he could have had him at you know lower health than this. Mm -hmm. But obviously, then he wouldn't be wouldn't have forced the shadow flip. This is turning out okay. Hmm. I mean, there's not much merit to anything except maybe you know. There's there's, mm. there's no good play here, unfortunately. Like hero power quartermaster, maybe like. And he's still, he's still so much off cure. Mm -hmm. The core hammer could have been played four turns ago, and yeah. he didn't have the opportunity to use the mana, so that's really unfortunate. And now. You know that your opponent is only at 7 HP and you have to go for it. You you have to ignore the board. You have to go for it and win this game. So you, you count on an example, a Consecration draw. And I think he will be trading, <laughs> which is a mistake, I think. At this point, I suppose there's no card you could draw that you would like get lethal with immediately. But you have to push it. You have three attacks with the core camera. If you draw the Consecrations, I mean, can it, win. I, I think before when he has seven, eight cards, you definitely have no option of it, you know. But now he has to figure, okay, the cards that he has left are cards that he has kept for nine turns, you know. So those would be, yeah, really Oops. iffy, I suppose, not high value cards. So if, he's thinking maybe if I draw, you know, if I draw like Sylvanas or if I draw Tyrion, I could do mm -hmm. okay. Well, maybe. We know that it's not, that's not going to happen. Probably not, I suppose, but there's, there's some, I mean... Well, you have the second owl for yeah, the Tyrion, it's, it's so true, yeah. it's only 6-6 mm -hmm. six, six minion. Mm -hmm. that, it doesn't really matter. It does nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, after the after the uh, Baker Hunter is gone here, a 6-6 six, six will actually do a decent amount, but not enough, I suppose, in this case. Well, Paladin is at 12 points, mm -hmm. so you can't play just Tyrion, because you, you well, you, can't, you have to, mm -hmm. if you draw this, but you, 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 that will be met with the silence, and you will get, like... Insane wow. amount of damage. Well, this is a great draw. This is one of the best. I think that's the best draw he, he could have got. I think so, yeah. Honestly, I think, yeah, with no AoE, if we see two dead draws in a row from life codes, this game is wide open again. What we, do you think of? What you just don't attack. You can't attack. There's yeah, no way. You have, <laughs> you have no no option to attack. You have about nine points. There's no way you can attack. You died to a dark bomb, you know, yeah. and it's likely that he would have one at this point or. Yeah, anything, even even Jiraxxus would kill you at that point, you know. It's still not bad for Life Coach, he has two anti-kill bots and a taunt. But these are not value cards, and at this point it's turning into a value game, I suppose. So what about second Belcher and one anti-kill bot and you go face with your whole army? That dies to a second Quartermaster. Which is be my question. I think at this point, like, he's so all in, he just has to keep on trading. No, I, I think you go face with those champions. You have seven, nine points of damage. Yeah, you, you go face. You have to count that if the zombie chows die, it's a consecration. You're so I far suppose, away. yeah, maybe you... Maybe since you have the taunt, you can just put on the, on the pressure here. But this is actually... Hmm, okay, so you can kill both the slot belchers. Yeah, but that's still... The owl will be left, the zombie chow will be left. So mm -hmm. if... It's life lethal, actually, will, yeah. Life control is lethal. No, wait, uh, yeah, it's exactly. Yes, so, right, yeah. because you yeah. trade two creatures for one Belcher, then it's one for the slime, two for the Belcher, and you have no option to kill the second slime. Mm -hmm. So it's two, five, seven, eight points of damage left. Yeah. It's actually, yeah, he, could, he, could, he could have technically altered the hill pot, and then it would only be, only be five, but still, he can't kill the zombie down, he to kill in that case. So life yeah. coach going up 2 0 here. 2 0 with the warlock. And Druid, so he has Paladin left, and he mm -hmm. will be he will be facing Hunter, Paladin, and Warrior. 
So that came really, really came down to that uh, that big hellfire there after the mm -hmm. uh, final break. But and, and I think that uh, sorry for interrupting, yeah, you, no but worries. I think um, if Bandemaffen would have just played the Palted Shredder on that turn instead of Peacekeeper, mm -hmm. it would have been much more like mana efficient and also uh, would be more board impactful than the Peacekeeper. It is, yeah. It, it's really hard, I guess, to know when you're in the seat. You know, you don't. You have so such little information, so I guess he was playing around, you know, this kind of a, a more well-rounded than, you know, c countering a specific line of play. But as we talked about, the Paladin is the deck that, you know, Benimov is going to have to be 3-0. So even though he does lose this, it's not as impactful as if he would lost for the Paladin. If if Lyko only had the Warlock left, I think it would basically be over the series already. But since he has the Paladin yeah. left, I think there's some merit that Benimov could take it. Back. Well, Warlock can still do really okay mm -hmm. against Warrior if that's the standard control warrior, and he has two big game hunters, right? Yeah. He had two big game hunters in the Warlock. Mm -hmm. If that would be the Grim Patron, yeah. That uh, abs absolutely. So we're we're banking him having a Grim Patron Warrior, I suppose. But now, I haven't seen Life Gods actually lose after being up 2 0. Have you ever <laughs> seen that? Um, I don't think so. That would be uh, a first, yeah. I, I'm browsing in my memory, but I, I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I, I saw I saw that kind of match when he he's being swept in reverse. Mm -hmm. So we have the hunter, the paladin, and the warrior left. Now we technically haven't seen the uh, hunter or the paladin. Yeah, well, he goes for the mirror match mm -hmm. first. Yeah, it, this isn't king in pro league when you want the tiebreakers to no, be yeah. as high as possible. So I think you maybe you want to go for the maybe the le um, the least possible win because mm -hmm. if you don't you, if you want to win it doesn't really matter because you lose the game anyway and you will want the, and you won't be over ex uh, exhausting yourself with more matches yeah you, yeah you definitely if you go up 2-2 and you lose the fifth game you're definitely in a worse state than just losing 3-0 you know yeah. like mm -hmm. a 3-0 it's okay it's fine the life coach you know is insanely good yeah. I'm fine just with that focus on the next yeah. match but if you yeah. like you get your hopes up really high if you get into game 5 and lose then and also another thing to see is this opponent will definitely be watching you know both uh, yeah, that's, yeah that's a good point mm -hmm. that's a very good point to bring uh, when, he, when your opponent will not see the hunter and the war at all. So you can keep them hidden, but a huge hand of Bunny Muffins. I am not seeing Bunny Muffins losing with that hand. Wow. Zombie Chow into Hillbot. He has the Harrison for the late game. But look at this. God -like. Mind control deck. It's, it's, it's a strong card, but I feel Bunny Muffins will just be able to overwhelm him. And if he keeps on tapping and tapping and tapping with the, uh, with, with the adding on dudes, the, the uh, Mind Control deck could become huge, but I think the Zombie Chow is, is the key card here because it can kill off the, the hero power again and again. And, mm -hmm. and I would or, say it's yeah. Zombie Chow and the Harrison Jones because mm -hmm. if, if, if like Life Coach will play the Master of Battle, then the Harrison Jones is just insane. Yeah. I mean, the Consecrate is like Consecrate, uh, Consecrate with the Zombie Chow and Hilpo doesn't go very well together. You either want, you know, no Zombie Chow and then you want to even think. out on turn three with a coin, Consecrate, or you want to get ahead and, and get something like a weapon on turn four, you know, like a two silver killing something, you know, to stay ahead of you. But you don't definitely yeah. don't want to exhaust you, but uh, it seems like that course is the slower Paladin, which is the weaker one in this case. Usually it's the other way around. I mean, let's say you go Handlock versus Handlock. Yeah. The greedier Handlock is the stronger one, but in this case it's the other way around. Yeah, because you you play with tempo much more mm -hmm. than uh, the handlock matchup, and we just got information that Crowbar actually eliminates Zosus. That's and a big they, upset, yeah. They played yesterday, and Zosus won the match mm -hmm. because you know the the first match was between those two guys, and the loser of that match, which was Crowbar, was given the bye because Frixus wasn't attending the group, right? Mm -hmm. So he went up to one one, and they had the rematch of yesterday, and now he won. That's crazy, especially considering that he had that Tempo Mage that's actually against Warrior. He also had that uh, Shaman, which dominates the Warrior. So, really impressive for Crobat. Oh, so, he got second place last time. But looking at the game, he's going for the Knife Terror, which is a greedier option, I suppose, uh, as it get, does get shut down by Coghammer. But there's just nothing in Life Coach's hand. I'm. If, if it, doesn't Mavis, look, yeah. it doesn't look good for Life Coach here. If he draws something like, mm. you know. But if it wasn't like a cog hammer or a true sliver, that's just borderline game over at that point. But oh, he doesn't have a weapon, that's the contract instead. So this is So what about just dropping the MC deck here? I think that you have to do it. I think you I think I would rather drop the the big game hunter because 
if it if he continues to draw poorly, live codes, oh, then yeah. he has some option later to get really lucky and you know steal something big. But the problem with the big game hunter is just really weak to a mind uh, to a masterful battle. Yeah, it right? is. Yeah. And if you play mind control deck, then maybe you will still trade for a minion, like full value minion, like mm -hmm. juggler or zombie Joe. He's here upon instead of going for the, the uh, big game hunter. And maybe that's uh, a sign of him not having the second big game hunter like in the other two decks. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> now, yeah, this is just. I wonder. Really How can strong. you stabilize one? I don't. You have to draw the consecration. I think there's no way you coin here. I'm, I'm not sure why he's marching march on the coin. Reporting for duty. Maybe he's just bluffing? <laughs> I, I'm not sure why. Like, I think. Since he got the, let, let's say you get something like an equality. That's a great top deck. Excellent top deck here. But let's say you get something like an equality, then your hand becomes a bit weaker. Mm -hmm. But I feel like since he has the Harrison, he has the uh, Dr. Boom, he can play more aggressive because he knows he's going to draw more. Yeah. So I, I, I would have liked the shield pot over the uh, hero power there. In that case. That's true. That's true. Then next one you can coin, low tap or Harrison Jones, depend, uh, it depends on what the life coach will do. Mm -hmm. But we know the life coach will play True Silver Champion, kill the knife juggler, and then we'll see a uh, coin Harrison Jones on turn five, on turn four, sorry. I think there's no way if he's not trying to play True Silver, it's just too strong here. But there is the counter, the infamous coin Harrison, sending him back to the museum. Yeah. What about... Where it belongs. Playing low tip this turn? I think there's no way you can dunk over Harrison. It's just. I know you, you can't keep the Harrison Jones um, for Tyrion. It doesn't make sense. You can't be greedy, especially when Paladins are playing like two, three, four mm -hmm. weapons. Yeah. Or even five with, with Cockhammer. Mm. I mean, there's some merit because he doesn't. In this case, like let's say he didn't have the coins. He only had three cards to start with. Mm -hmm. And he got something like, you know, the iffy cards, like the quality, etc. Then. It would be more important to draw something like, you know, get three draws out of the Mustard for Battle of the Lightbringer there, or get three draws out of the uh, Tyrion Forging. But since uh, he has all this value and all these cards in his hand, he doesn't need to draw as much as he needs a tempo. And he gets a lot of tempo when he's in the Harrison now. So I think, considering his hand, this is a very nice board, but I definitely agree. Like, if he had a weaker and smaller hand, it would be stronger to go for something like, you know, Harrisoning a Cockhammer or Light Justice or, or yeah. Uh, Life's justice, wow. <laughs> okay, so now life coach has a really weak turn. You have to go heal bot, I would say. I think so, yeah. It the knife juggler hero power is uh, it's really weak here. Yeah. It's really weak. Life is coach's hand is is awkward, really awkward, and um Balan and Mafia will be just pushing through the Board like crazy. Mm -hmm. so, Cockhammer now doesn't make sense. This Cockhammer and, and, and Shield Mini Bow might be okay. It's not ideal though, but you would want to trade the token yeah, first the token in. Token first, yeah. 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 Like, then you have a 50 50 to get the Divine Shield on the Harrison Jones, which is insane then. Mm -hmm. You have a like a reverse Sun, uh, <laughs> Sunwalker. Mm -hmm. That's true, actually. Yeah. Like a, a what, what do you call it? The uh, using the version mm -hmm. switch to the Mac. Mac uh, spare part there. Oh yeah, or, uh, um, the reversing switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, I think I like the cockhammer a bit later on, which you, which you will be able to, I guess, trade immediately. You know, like let's say life coach plays a low tap, and you could go for that right away. So I like the low tap here better. You know, uh, and you want now, that immediate trade. Now, quickly, you, this mind control might. It's gonna be insane. This yeah. is gonna be the game. I'd say if he gets a bad mind control tech, if he gets the one one or something, it's just. If, but if he gets the 5-5 five, five or 5-4, five, it's really insane. Mm -hmm. Imagine, you play a 3-mana creature, which is 3-3, free, free, and it spawns a 5-5. Five, five, five. Yeah. How much mana is it worth? Me. It's godlike, yeah. Absolutely <laughs> godlike. But now... And... Oh, oh wow. That's, That's unfortunate. not good at all. And he's the worst minion as well with hitting the low depth Yeah. There. That's very unfortunate. Now, think about how good the Consecrate is going to be. My god. Now, Life Coach really didn't need value. He needed, you know, he needs tempo over everything. So, I mean, there's no other play here except I killing wonder. the token. I don't see anything else being a possibility. And the Consecrate will just be overpowering in that case. 
that was a RNG that was game designing. I, I think so, yeah. I mean, he can't really complain, I, I guess, you know, like, he gets one minion killed and he gets one, like, this is still, you know... Yeah, it's still a, it's a, it's still a good position, mm -hmm. but... I mean, the, the Man Manchester gets value, but him, it's not the comeback he needed. And yeah. this was the comeback card, definitely. He was so behind the board that not stealing a 5 attack minion is just game, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, here it feels like Contra created an auto, auto play here. I think so. This is, yeah, looking rough. I mean, I think it's, it's only saving grace, I suppose, here is, is that, you know, he doesn't have the big game hunter me uh, think. for the uh, Dr. Boom that's probably in coming here. But I, I think the only scenario now that life could possibly have coming back is if Ben Weffert gets to greedy and just keeps on going face. I think he's going face now, but next turn, you know, there's some merit, I suppose, if he's seen life coach play. He always tends to go for those greedy paladins. Yeah, but it's also important that life coach didn't get the five points of heal from the zombie Joe. He did, yeah, that's, that's absolutely right, yeah. Now, what can he do here? Uh, nothing. He can stay alive, but barely so. He'll need to drop the quality for nothing. Equality and Harrison like Jones? But Harrison Jones, yeah. Or I mean, life course doesn't need to draw anyway, so Harrison Jones will just be for value. I think maybe, even, yeah, Big Game Hunter, he needs a Big Game Hunter, but he's gonna get it for a 5-1. I it doesn't really matter but because Bad Martin yeah, has the, the lethal anyway. Yeah. Yeah. A rough match for Life Coach. His draws were below average, I would say. I think it's, I think Banyuev's oh, deck was just stronger in this case. You know, the standard, the standard mm -hmm. uh, Paladin is just strong against like, in the mirror against the greedy Shaman. So, actually, with such a greedy Paladin, uh, not, not Shaman Paladin, but I think I think with such a greedy Paladin, he might run into trouble against. I mean, we have the hunter left, and then we have, you know, the warrior. And if, even if it's, you know, a greedy paladin, Green Patron Warrior will still win, I'd say. I don't really think that Vandermaffer will play with Green Patron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if he doesn't, there's no chance. This will wreck warrior, a normal control warrior, absolutely. <laughs> there won't be a question. I mean, maybe if there's some crazy Alex Traza into Grommas, but it's unlikely, I'd say. That's right? the only scenario that, that the warrior can win, I think. Mm -hmm. If he goes to fatigue anyhow, because, you know, you have the tempo, you have the Tyrion for value, you have the Harrison, I suppose, you know? like And maybe two big hunters. Whereas, you know, Warrior has a lot of cards that are kind of, you know, built around keeping you alive, like the, the shield box, etc., that aren't a lot of value. I suppose you draw, you can just cycle with them, but you yep. also have the Harrison. Yep. Uh, so, Bunny secures the Paladin. Mm -hmm. Going up 2-1 for life codes. He only needs to win the Paladin once. I wonder now, if he's going for the Hunter, that would probably... I, I would think he'd be playing the Grim Page Warrior if he's going for the Hunter. If he's not going for the Hunter, I would go for the Warrior now and, you know... Get like, it done. Yeah, exactly. Don't show yeah. an extra attack if you don't need to, because the Hunter could be a Control Hunter, it could be a you know, mid-range mid Hunter even as unlikely as the Control Hunter is, but we did see yeah, that yeah. last tournament, I suppose, with Fake playing really well with his uh, Control Hunter. He didn't get the best draws and had some some tough tough calls there, so it didn't really work out for him, I suppose, in that case, but a really cool deck to see from him there, yeah. Control Hunter, yeah, I didn't see that from, like, one year, or oh, even yeah. more. Gazrilla, it's uh, Gazrilla and uh, the uh, Wild Paramount, but looking at this now, uh, I think this is the challenge he needs. The Paladin's the deck he needs to kill. Well, the Hunter should be favored, almost no matter what Hunter it is, I suppose. I, I think it's still the same case for Bunny. If you want to go, if you want to squeeze the win, mm -hmm. you you have to and be more like efficient, I suppose, yeah, and fit for the next match. Mm -hmm. I will go for the less favorable matchup. Yeah. So it it really depends now on the builds. We don't know the builds of bunnies. So if it's a face hunter, you go first with the warrior. If mm -hmm. it's a warrior, if it's green patron, then you go first with the hunter. Uh, if it's a midrange hunter, so it's like many ifs. Yeah. And um, we'll have to see how it pans out. Uh, but for life coach. It doesn't really matter. Uh, for for life, it doesn't really matter. He has only one deck. He has to win twice. Uh, I mean, once with, in maybe two upcoming matches. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't really matter for him. But I think if he picks the hunter, we could go to game five easily. But uh, so now coming up is going to be game number four. But we're going to go to a short break before that. 
Welcome back. After the break, um, those who just tuned in may, might not know that we have the game between Life Coach and Bunny Muffin. It's now 2 1 for Life Coach. He has the Paladin deck left, and he will have to face either a Hunter or Warrior from Bunny Muffin. Mm -hmm. Really exciting games now. Uh, kind of things went as expected, I suppose. The big upset was uh, Life Coach actually beating the, uh, the Paladin there with a the Druid, a yeah. big upset with a Nervous yeah. there. So uh, we're going into now. Hunter or Warrior, it's, it's, yeah, really back and forth on that. I think this Paladin, it's, it's really cool. I think you have two equalities, I believe. Um, two, you think two? We didn't see two equalities at once. Mm -hmm. So we are not sure of that. And uh, from what I have seen of his play style, yeah. he didn't, like, hesitate to play it. So I think he, he is mm, either is only one equality and mm -hmm. then he wants to save it for the best opportunity to cast it. Or on the other hand, his just his playstyle is really safe, and mm -hmm. you know, being more greedy with uh, with the opportunities here. From my point of view, at least with uh, how I play Paladin, it, it feels like when I'm playing the mid range one, kind of mm -hmm. faster one. I want only one quality because I have a lot of minions on board, so yeah. I only want it for. Let's say he plays Doctor Boom, I have a few tokens I can just quality and kill a Doctor Boom, you know. Okay. But in the more uh, greedy one, the way I play it at least is I. Uh, Start off by you know playing on 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 curve you know into shield shield mini bar etc. Then I always fall a bit behind like in the <laughs> early mid game. And then you use the quality consecration to yeah. clear the board and go with the big minions. Mm -hmm. Turn to turn to turn. It's kind of like a ramp, but with a with a slow mid game and then a huge clear. You know. Mm -hmm. and okay, I get it. I get it. I, I, we kind of saw that in the Paladin versus Paladin game. Uh, uh, Panyo has got slightly ahead. Then there was no clear, and he just lost, you know. But if we, let's say, on turn six or something, if it's seen a quality consecrate there, it would have been a totally different game here uh, for for life coach, as he could have just dropped a uh, turn to turn, turn, you know, uh, Tyrion Fordring, Kaldasar, etc., etc. Yep. Here, uh, but we do see life coach with a coin against the warrior now. Welcome that's really huge getting the coin because if it's going to be the Grim Patron warrior, it's it's huge not having the coin. It's horrible, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you're. Com, uh, your options when it comes to making a combo just drastically are lowered without the coin. Yeah, you get the war strong Grim Patron just have turn later, and you also have one less card, so there's less opportunities to draw the Thorazan. Now yeah. we see Thorazan, Kaladasad, Tyrion. Uh -oh. Well, we see the Armor Smith, Accolade of Pain, and Sludge Bell, so we can assume that this is a Contra Warrior, yeah, right? Yeah, this is uh, an awesome hand for the start. I think you'd keep both the Armor Smith and the Accolade. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. An awesome start, but a horrible deck against... And a th yeah. Taskmaster. That's the god... Wow, this is the god hand oh, against god. Paladin, man. Jesus. Yeah, he has a really great opening hand. This might be now very hard to life code, for life code. Yeah, like, looking at these two decks on paper, I would have I would given the Benny Muffin the, the, the huge disadvantage, but with this hand, I think it actually evens out. Because this is the best possible hand I can think of. And even a Brawl. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, the Brawl is also huge, you know, yeah. you maybe don't want it right now, but, you know, getting it on turn 4 is, is fine, you know, because you can have an option after that, you know, turn 5, turn 6, turn Brawl if you get behind, but I guess it's not as strong against the uh, against the late game Paladin as you aren't as far behind, because with the mid-range Paladin, the way you kill them, the warriors just to get ahead and, and stay ahead, you know, kind of like a suit type of playstyle, mm -hmm. but yeah. this one is more, of a, yeah, one at a time, it feels. Now the life coach has a problem with uh, the peacekeeper. If you peacekeeper the armor smith, it doesn't have any effect on mm -hmm. the board. So it's basically a free mana, free uh, attack, free health minion, and it dies directly to the taskmaster. So that's the problem. It trades, but it's still really weak. It doesn't have any effect. It is, yeah. But uh, there's also even the possibility of a weapon. Now shield made it not too bad. You kind of want like the. Uh, you definitely want to go with the acolyte now. Um, I'm mm -hmm. not even sure you trade. You probably trade because there's a possibility of coin blessing of kings. So, uh, coin blessing of kings. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's I, I was card of guard here. I don't think anyone what? uses that now. <laughs> it's it's pop, pop, popular in the mid range one. Uh, if you run the cog hammer as well, because mm -hmm. you have the possibility of you know uh, this is the mini button and the cog hammer. I okay. Figured. It's 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 aggressive. Definitely, it's really aggressive. There's oh, a, look at this. That's Who's the, the champion. That's a huge draw. You definitely want to. Would you call that out? I suppose. Oh, I mean, I there's smirk for the so. owl, I suppose. Should we it? You can't play the Emperor until turn 5, so you're mm -hmm. two turns away. Well, three turns away if you use the coin. 
Uh, but I think mm. you have to use the coin to play the two solo champion and get rid of that um, Acolyte of Pain because if you don't do that, then you you kind of leave Warrior open with options to draw maybe even three cards. If Warrior draws three cards, I, I think this is so hard to to do anything uh, with, uh, with that with that, with that kind of card advantage from the Warrior. And you know that there might be a Harrison Jones, and it won't be played until turn five. Mm -hmm. So you have two free two attacks with the Dress of the Champions now, instead of just one. I mean, the Warriors already had on board and tempo, and if you can get ahead on cards as well, it's just you know then there's nothing you have have the advantage in. But I, I think I like this owl. It gives the option of you know coining out the uh, the, uh, the Thorazon, yeah, after the two silvers, but. I will go for the for the Tursova champion, mm -hmm. but you know maybe they, they both both have yeah. have their merits definitely. I kind of like just cash master here oh. to kill the owl. Yeah, uh, just keep it simple, I, I suppose. For this one, it also means you can just hero power and and uh, have have the uh, seal block next turn as possible. But it's actually, actually merit, I suppose, when you were talking about the two silver playing out now, so it's over when the Harrison threat comes. Yeah. That's, that's a good well, point. Well, it's not like you can play around one off card in, in your opponent's deck, but I, I, mm -hmm. I think that's that's something you would want to say and do when you see the opponent, <laughs> opponent's hand, but not maybe it's not so intuitive when you just play the game. Oh, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, if you look at this, he goes for the True Silver and he's gonna get Harrison. But this is still the right play, you know? Yeah, he definitely. obviously can't know, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I think, consider, we were talking earlier about Harrisoning a small weapon with many charges versus a big weapon with one charge. This hand from uh, Penny Weapons is not as stacked as the hand before. That's so it's, it's not as strong, I suppose. Oh, second True Silver Champion. Okay. So now it got changed. That's really strong. What do you think now about the Russell champion, championing instead of the Emperor? Because the Emperor dies to the Harrison Jones. I think and both of them excellent, yeah. And also dies to Shin Slam. Like without any any kind of you know investment in, in more armor. It's just one mana Let Shin Slam. Me Emperor dies. There actually is but the thing is there's a possibility that you go coin Emperor into True Silver, Altor and Shieldbot all on one turn, that turn six, into turn seven Tyrion. Oh, he goes for the two silver champion. Mm -hmm. It's it's they're both really strong in this case, yeah. As I mean, let's say that he would have gone for the emperor, he would have just gotten uh, shield, shield blocked, and that would be the end of it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And the shield minion bot is great against uh, this kind of situation. It it won't die uh, to Taskmaster. It uh, only dies to Fury Fury <laughs> Fury War X, which is just being drawn. So I think you just go War X. Acolyte of Pain, ping the Divine Shield with your Acolyte of Pain, which is already silenced on board, and then you can finish it off with the X. Mm -hmm. no. uh, a thing to consider is that he coined out the Shield board last turn, and the reason he does this is because he's going to use the Emperor, he doesn't need the coin to play out the uh, Harrison, uh, the, the Tyrion Forging, I mean, because he'll be for seven mana anyway, and it'll be turn seven, so that's, that's the reason for that coin. Yeah, that's true. but. If you will play the Acolyte of Pain, you basically feed the Acolyte to the mm -hmm. True Silver Champion, and he will think about that. Well, it's also, it's um, maybe it's also there's also merit to play just this Shields Maiden, but I, I don't think so. It, it will just feel weak to when 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 it will die to the mini bot and the attack from the True Silver Champion. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure like this too much. Like. Then? Let's say he would have drawn the. Uh, okay. Let's say he would have drawn the. Uh, the Grommas. It would have close to being game over. You know. I mean, unless there's no Taunt Exterior in here, but it, it's. It's rough. I think I would have wouldn't, wouldn't like that. I think I would like the uh, fireworks better than the Tashmaster there. Mm -hmm. So now you just drop the Emperor, right? Mm -hmm. You kill both creatures. Right. You got Emperor. The only question is. Do I want to get one more point of damage? No. You, I mean, there's no difference because you can sacrifice the creature, so there's nothing to think of, I think. Th there's no... I think that the weapon is the only thing to think of. You could definitely can run the 2-2 two -two into the 3-2. That's well, for sure. The, the play is for sure that you're going to go for the Emperor, but the weapon on the 2-2... Two -two, it's not for sure. I don't what know. about dropping two Peacekeepers? 
I'm not. I think because it doesn't follow up into Tyrion. That's the only reason. Like if yeah. you could go yeah, Aldor right Tyrion, that. that would be a possibility. If you go Aldor Aldor and then Tyrion on the next turn, it would. Uh, that will be a play uh, around the shield smash, right? Because mm -hmm. then you Let can chip off the armor and play Move your quickly. big creatures afterwards. But I still think the Emperor is the best option. I think the second option would be possible to consecrate and kill both the two health minions there. Uh, but I don't like him attacking if he's gonna attack here. I think if I were him, he's thinking about it hard, but I think in the end, like, there's so many other targets. Oh, he goes for the armor. Mm -hmm. So, a heads up play, yeah. but we know that there's a shield maiden and shield block, so whatever he does, that doesn't matter. It's true, like, he has never given him a great minion to have shield blocked, I suppose. A shield slammed, so he could have easily had the shield slam in there. Oh, the second shield slam. He wow. can go for the shield maiden, I suppose, shield slam, which is a no brainer in this situation. Yeah, it is better. And he used the uh, the shield slam that he topped it. So, also. Oh, uh, giving him less information, yeah. I suppose, yeah. Dr. Boom on seven. So you have two seven drops. Wow. You have two cool legendaries on turn seven. What do you do? You can't pl play Dr. Boom instantly. I think the merit is going for Tyrion would be because you have get three charges of the weapon and you want to be starting mm -hmm. to use those immediately, you know. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. you get them on turn eight, yeah. then you get the weapon, uh, yeah. And then you can't be hating until turn nine and then it's turn nine then he will be going until turn uh, 12, I suppose. So the problem is it will be killed by the shield slam mm -hmm. and you can also think about if you play the Tyrion, you want to put uh, your opponent in the position when uh, you want uh, when he will use the big game hunter to gain at the same time board position and card advantage. Yeah, uh, that's definitely true. I think. What do you think about? Put your faith Just going back. back. There's no answer in the possible in the deck for rack. Okay, now it's now it's more of a debate. I think now you go shield slam after this is made in here. But if, if there will be no shield maiden, I think there will be some merit to going rack after hitting with a 2-2. Two, two. I don't think so. I think still, sh even without the shield maiden, mm -hmm. I would still what? go for the no. shield, uh, shield slam with um, maybe shield block. Uh, yeah, because you, after, after you, if you have 5 armory, you might as well have 10. It doesn't matter, you know, at that point. And when you use both shield, shield blocks, it, it becomes less of a, of a threat. I mean, 36 yeah. health or 41 isn't a big deal, so you yeah. just cycle it. And uh, you, would, you don't want to be like vulnerable to a no. quality uh, consecration or a quality pyromancer because Life Coach is known of playing that. Mm -hmm. And the rag would just die with two creatures on board. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, with one. I'm just thinking, like, you know, what other case rag would be better in than having a 6 6 mini on board? I think I would have liked the shield maiden better because he. He's basically, is he thinking about the tempo or the options? And, and I think the tempo is more important here than the options, you know. Well, he also thinks about the brawl. That, that's, I think that's the reason. If you if you play the second minion, which is a 5-5, five five, then you practically deny yourself the brawl value. But the thing is, you you don't want to be putting yourself in a position where you have the brawl, because it would it would put you in a, in a lot of trouble. If you want, then you're basically giving up the tempo, I suppose. And, also, playing the weapon oh, gives wow. gives the option for something like the top deck here, which is the Harrison. I yeah, mean, so, so Harrison Peacekeeper kill, kill the one five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, do you want to keep the Harrison for other weapons? I don't think so. Maybe a gore hole, but you mm. don't even know if he plays out if he plays one. So you either go Harrison now or you wait for a death spite. That doesn't make any sense, right? Um, you mean you, you start with the, the Harrison for sure. There's some merit to going sweater because you know there's going to be no cool Taskmaster for the Grommash, for the lethal there. But There might be a war, uh, Warwind. Yeah, that's, pos that's true. But he will go to 12 if he attacks without going, going with the sweater. So I think because he draws the taunt here, he can afford to just attack the uh, Shield Maiden with a weapon. Mm -hmm. And go Shredder. Yeah, I think so. If he had gotten no taunt, he wouldn't have been able to do that because, let's say, you just okay, put up and then it's, it's wide open again. So I think sweater and attack here is the way to go. And by oh, we'll, we'll go quickly. with the Ragnars, I think. Mm -hmm. A second thing to consider is also uh, he just doesn't have the ten mana, I suppose, to go for that combo. So he has one turn to get the taunt back up before that happens. I think I would still go for the peacekeeper. Mm -hmm. Just he has two as well. Yeah. That's actually two because if if he does go for the sweater. He has less health to spend on the weapon, you know. Because yeah. health becomes a resource now uh, for value. That's true. And also, you can think of that peacekeeper like um, 
a half of an anti kill bot. Mm -hmm. It just yeah, it's true. killed for four points. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Actually, that's true for for two mana. But yeah, Ragnaros has to come down here, I think. So think about how better it would be, like you know, before. Because now, let's say you don't, you, it's always going to be one minion up, and that minion is just gonna call to trade in, you know, no matter what. What is fun of life, because even at 16 points of life, he wants to get hit in the face. Yeah, it's true. Oh, lay on hands. That's huge. Yeah, but now you can drop. Uh, you can drop boom, Peacekeeper, Peacekeeper the Ragnaros, kill the Ragnaros for one point of damage. This is a really great outcome, but then we'll know, we know that it will, it will be a brawl. I think it's maybe... Maybe he can just afford it, because he's so, so far ahead in the value anyway. Yeah. Kiro Power and the uh, Pilot Shredder? <laughs> nah. <laughs> he I wants to go aggressive as a ball, because there's 43 health to go. Maybe that's his idea, but the thing is, we know that there's a rack, so that there's going to be no core howl. It's always rack or core howl. And if there would be a core howl, he could go into the late game fatigue almost, you know, for yeah, the value true. there. That's true. But it's with like six cards. Yeah, absolutely. With, but with rack gone, no core howl, he doesn't even need to stay, you know. He can just go aggressive and, and be greedy and go for the Dr. Boom and not give a damn if he gets, you know, rolled or not. But he's really thinking about it here. Doesn't he plays the build here and hero powers. Okay, so he kind of plays around uh, the brawl too with the belcher. The thing to consider though is that the belcher is actually more crucial than Doctor Boom. Yeah, because right. health is more important than the actual slight value here. Or well, slight value, so there's a lot of value difference in Doctor Boom between the belcher. <laughs> but <laughs> looking at that, also important thing to know that. If he plays Belcher now, he can afford to play Leon Hands next turn. Because mm -hmm. he, he he will have the Taunt, which will be crucial against the creatures that will be played by Bynamathen this turn. So he can afford to, you know, spend the time to actually heal himself to get those crucial cards in an uh, upcoming turn. Now the question is, if Bynamathen can afford to play Sylvanas without anything else, and I think he can. He has 43 health, so yeah. I think it's probably the way to go now. Because no the brawl next turn is insane. Mm -hmm. Unless Master for Battle God <laughs> comes and now you can sacrifice the Harrison Johns for Sylvanas and just go face with everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you first attack with the Peacekeeper, Belcher, and um, your token, then you play, then you attack for five with your face and play Master for Battle, sacrifice the Let Harrison Johns for the Sylvanas. What do you think about that? I think it's good. I think the slight merit to not attack him with a token, so you can fade into another token if he gets stolen. Oh yeah. I yeah. suppose, but it's, it's still... I think there's a lot of options in that. Uh, but the thing is, even though this might get shut down, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the board will be full, and a full board is definitely what you want when you have Let a brawl in hand. Thing. That's true, but then you can play Palter Trader and Dr. Boom mm -hmm. after the brawl. And then there'll be no, no counter action. I mean, that, that may, be, may stabilize out, because you go Brawl, and then you go Belcher. And let's say there's a, a Altor, which would be maybe an average minion to stay alive after that, you know? Yeah. Uh, then that just totally gets down the the Belcher. You have the Dr. Boom and the Shredder. Oh, he didn't attack with the, with the Belcher. Oh. oh. That's weird, right? Right? He didn't attack yeah. with the Belcher. Yeah, he didn't. I'm not liking this at all. Well, it's not bad, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, b b considering, I suppose, yeah. Um, he's like just giving up unnecessary tempo here. Life coach is... He, he, looks, he looks a bit he shaken looks, off, yeah. yeah. He looks confused. What happened? Yeah. He looks like there was a misclick or something. That, that's his expression I'm getting from his face right now. Really confused. Yeah, he's shaking his head. What What's going on there? I think he... That's, that's the reason why he missed the three points of damage. You know? Very uncharacteristic there. But let's look at Mop Penny of his hand now. Hmm. There's not much merit to go in Dr. Boom, I suppose, with not that much value on the board. I, what do you think about these two Belchers? Two Belchers? Yeah, that seems powerful, yeah. I would say. Yeah. The Quartermaster will not achieve anything. Mm -hmm. And, um. Hmm. I don't know what to do with what some of those two Belchers. It's really hard, yeah. I suppose you want the, the five, is, five damage weapon here. I, I don't like the, 
Dr. Boom at all. If there's like a big game hunter. Or even, uh, yeah, anything really. You can just even fade into it, like. Yeah. Fade it, fade into it, go on Contra Fade. But I think we talk about now, we see a. M m uh, yeah, we see, see the uh, mind control attack here from Life Caution. That again goes to the early mid game when you fall behind as the control piled in. <laughs> Same thing that happens with Ram through it. Then. At that point, you can play the uh, the mind control tech and just get ahead. Because if you're behind, you're probably your opponent probably has four minions, so you can kind of stabilize against mech mates, against you know the true decks, against the aggro paladins. So that's that's definitely a good card in the uh, control uh, mm. paladin. Now life coach has to think what to do with that board, and I think the Belcher is kind of saving him. Mm -hmm. Move. It really is, yeah. We haven't seen a Grommash though, and he has thrown away both his Taskmasters. Find him weapon, so it's it's rough. Is he now? So Master and uh, Quartermaster, kill the one one, and play Belcher. I think he has to go Quartermaster. With all those tokens up. I can't imagine anything else. Trade in. This is not bad, yeah. Yeah, this is not bad at all. Quarter matter is the you know Wookiee Man card I suppose against Oh wow against Warrior. Some people even keep quarter in their starting hand when you're playing mid paladin. Yeah, that's true. That's um that's a good um good thing to note. But the the boom bot actually hit the least desirable mm -hmm. target, I think. Absolutely. And this is yeah, this is just rolling into the value state for the paladin. This is definitely where he wants to be. No. This You have to brawl. Yeah, I think so. And but then you have to play Belcher because it fits the cure. He would favor the shield flames, but there's no way he could play that. If you remember back to the point where there was Shield Maiden on board and he decided to play the Shield Block instead of Shield Maiden, you know, mm -hmm. he could have pushed for more damage, you know, and he could have had him at like 10, 12 damage at the moment. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right so any time that the Grommash pops up, it's just over, you know. Which is the best way to kill a paladin if you control paladin if you're playing warrior or anyone anyone else? Indeed, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when the when deck is greer, then you. What do you about this knife joker in there? Uh, I was thinking about it for a second. I don't hate it. Let's say you get like a uh, death spite now. Be huge. Well, is it? I mean, with the pos possibility, I suppose, of uh, going just full face and pushing damage, but... Okay, so we're gonna see the pick amount coming down yeah. no matter what. And but that's good uh, for life coach because then he baits out no. for Consecration, right? Mm -hmm. uh, probably... Machilman is the more, more aggressive choice. What do you think about Hero Power, Belcher, Bingham Hunter? It's, it has its, its merits, definitely. I think it's between, yeah. Because you don't want to play the... Shield Maiden, when there's two what boom bots no. the, uh, on the board. It's I think I like I think I like the uh, shield block. Uh, no, the uh, hero power, big game hunter better. But you go face. Yeah, you absolutely go face. Oh okay. no! There's no merit doing that. No, no, no. Why on God? Paladin is already kind of low. You know? Yeah, you want to set him up for Gromas. Yeah. You have the second Taskmaster. But I think that this play is right, but you go for the face. The thing is, now the Contraquare will become crucially important. You can clear with Contraquare. So you first, on that. first attack with the Apartheid Shredder, right? Do you? No, I think you... I think you start with the Contraquare and then go for the Boombot onto the 3-1. Oh yeah. And then you can clean up either way. No, 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 why 3-1? No, no, no. Uh, if you Consecrate first, but one Belcher is 3-2, second one is 3-3. So I think you kill one of the Belchers and then play Consecration. Maybe you sacrifice the 3-3 three, three first. So you kill the 3-3. Three, three. I was thinking I'd, I'd value the, uh, the Paladin's Feather over the Boom Pot in the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, okay. But it's, 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 it doesn't matter in this case. Like the, it's, He's not going to lose on value anyway. He's yeah. going to lose on tempo and, and uh, burst, so... That's true. So now you you kill the free free with your free free, and then you kill the little slime with your. Put this apple on your head. I didn't anticipate that because I wanted to play the Belt Sky Gun, so you kind of count me with that. Right? Yeah, the thing is, like, if you it's gone for the knife juggle, he should probably gone for it before the pallet is better to uh, get the extra juggle from the pop that minion. Maybe you were thinking there was a chance of a doomsayer or something that would be bad to have me in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's right. Well, this is the best outcome, actually. 
because he hit he hit with the bomb. Yeah. So that was really really crucial. Wow. But, but let's say you know the bomb actually. Did you see that? Yeah, it's a huge huge swing turn here. Wait, what 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 you go? Cruel Taskmaster execute. That's gonna that clear that's the board. Clear the board. Yeah. That's wow. Everything is turning around. But if we go down to last turn, there was a there was a four health minion. Uh, no, three health minion. You could actually kill that with a boom bot, and then you have only the slot belcher left and the face. So it's 50 50 to hit the uh, slot belcher. And if it hits, then you can just clear without and having the shredder intact, you know. And let's say, mm -hmm. like, let's say if you had the shredder, the possibility would be either having, you know, a 3 3, three 2 on board now or having a shredder. Well, it's different, yeah. Yeah, it's different. I'm, I'm not sure if it's better, mm -hmm. but definitely playing the Taskmaster into Execute into Baron Ginnon is just perfect. This is godlike, yeah. He, he's gonna put him down to 15, clear the board. And Life Coach has, at least now, no answer to the attack of Baron Ginnon next turn. So mm -hmm. he will be at 8 points of life. Yeah. And I mean, just a Grommash then, or a weapon, uh, you know. Like, yeah, oh, he's two attacks with the weapon, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Uh, oh, he doesn't go for it. Oh, that, that that's really weird. I, I think. The thing is, uh, when you're playing against priest, with uh, with priest against warrior, or pilot against warrior, we want to save the belchers a lot for the possibility of Alex Rosa and, and a, a combo. If the belcher had been dead, you would have had there would be no no saving grace. Like he would have just been down to like six six health or something. And what do you do? There's nothing you can do, really. Yeah, any cool. any big weapon, there's two death spells left, there's a Grommash left, anything like that, and the game is just over. There's no... no... no comeback to that, I mean... No, a slight misplay from Life Coach here. He could have um, put the Palito Shredder in between the minions, because there are so many two-drops that, that benefit both of the minions on your sides. Yeah, the, the, the Dival, for example, the Flame Tongue yeah. Totem, so a lot of options there. Hmm. There's actually some merit to execute, Cruel Tashmat execute and going face. That, that I thought that's very aggressive and I don't see Banamafin doing that. He's he's playing really safe most of the time. He and is, but he, he needs to identify that. He, so eight cards left for both players here. The thing is, the cards that are left for Banamafin, there's at least one armor smith we know of. Yeah, a one armor smith, uh, two alkalis were played, so one armor smith, one fear war axe, two death spites. There's Alex Traza left. Alex Traza, yeah, and um, Gromash. Yeah. So that's six. So there's decent, decent amount of stuff left actually. What else? There could be. It depends on the deck, I suppose. There could be, you know, Silvana. There could be a Lothab. There could be all sorts of yeah, different things. Yeah, a might be there. But I mean, I think there's nothing left to execute. You know, I think you absolutely need to go face here. You're not gonna win in the late game value. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. As I said, it really goes like very, very slow. This. Is he thinking about executing the pal this better? Thanks. So he goes for the golem. I mean, what possible? I don't could think so. That's that's right. I, don't I mean, think he that's kills right. his own guy with this play. Like. Yeah. And he. Tri that's really awful, in my opinion. Considering the cards are left at least in the deck. Quality now, that doesn't really matter. So now you sacrifice the keeper, which wouldn't be possible if the <laughs> if the execute wouldn't have been played. Mm -hmm. I mean let's let's look at the possibility of just executing the Belcher and doing nothing uh, nothing more, you know. Well if we think of that, you should have just used it yeah. on the turn when you play the Baron Gedit. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean the, the the thing is like he he gets the cool Taskmaster. He throws it away for almost nothing here, but yeah, life code has to go all in with the uh, with everything. Basically, he has to push for damage. He knows that he might be dead really soon. Alex Straza coming now. Okay, it does little. And the quality, you heal your opponent for two. That's unfortunate. This is the perfect time for quality. I don't see a better one coming up at least. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a quality knife juggler. Well, okay, you have no more. <laughs> no, no more spots to spawn the hero power. But let's say, let's say he just, you know, executes so he, and goes face. He can literally mm. just sit for four turns. He has the health for it. Mm -hmm. Draw the death spite or the chrome and win. That's true. 
Yeah. So that's the reason why Life Coach has to play the Nav Juggler, just to push for more damage. Reporting for duty. Yeah, because I mean, if, if there's a death by the Gromas, he will still win. So he yes. needs to give him as few turns as possible to draw into that. Because he knows if that, if those, that combo comes up, it's just lights out. So Deathspite would be the card to draw here. And the Gromash next turn. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He has two left, and arm arm left. left. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, maybe not unfortunate, like... Mm -hmm. Okay, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. about the worst card you could possibly draw in this situation. Six uh, cards left for... Consecrate does Consecrate, uh, Well, you can kill first the armor smith. No, you don't want to do that. So you can use your nav jogger into armor smith. Kill it off with uh, your weapon. Yeah. No, you can kill it off with one of your dudes, because you will use the hero power anyway. Mm. So then you go with the Palted Shredder, go with the one juggle after you kill the armor smith, and maybe you can kill it off with your hero power. <laughs> I mean, 14 or 15 doesn't matter in this case for the, uh, the Paladin. He's out of the 12 first range, and there's no Taskmaster left as well, so it's... Uh, oh, he goes so for the Mind Control deck. I didn't like that, to be honest. I would rather sacrifice the uh, Palatine Shredder and count on not having a Doomsayer here. Mm -hmm. But yeah. he goes su super safe with that. Now, I think in this case, it's gonna come down to actually give would it, would, it, uh, would it matter if he would draw into a... He gets the Death Spider, wow. This is opens the whole game up here. So it's like four cards left for the warrior, I think. It's about even, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, you don't execute, I believe. The thing is, at least there's nothing to be played next turn, so you might as well. You might as well just not go for it here. The, the, See the mini button, absolutely nothing. Yeah, this is opening up to a possible Five value cards, play. 20, yeah. 20 percent chance to win the game instantly. Get, get the Gromas, yeah, and if he wins with the Warrior now, this will become quite a series as the Hunters, the Kalash left, and yeah. that's going to be excellent against so, the Kalash. And no, it's not, it's not a legend. Ooh. We could have seen the, you know, the, oh, the border, border of the yeah. game, of the card when it was being drawn from the deck. So we know he can use the Death Spite now and kill off the whole board. I think you have to go face. <gasps> no, 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 no. Why, Why did you do that? You can, you can clear, but you, your health is way more important. No, that was awful. Yeah. That was really awful. He plays... Bandit Muffin makes, makes the same mistake every single game. He plays too safe. He... Uh, that's the... That's... Uh, I think that's the thing you... You see with unexperienced players, you know? They are new to the stage, they, they feel frightened, kinda, so they play more reserved than uh, the pro players. Let's, let's really think see. about this is If he had seven health now, if he gone face, well, what would have that result in? Second death fight? Okay. That wouldn't be enough. But still. That would certainly for the next turn, I suppose. Yeah, but if he w would go face, he would be at seven, so drawing a uh, Gromash would actually be lethal, because mm. he has three and fall from the Gromash without ever activation, so it was setting up for next turn lethal. Yeah, sure. So, definitely a mistake with the last turn there, and he, he would have a 25% chance to win the game instantly with the last draw he had. So, really exciting matches, really exciting matches. The, the, the last one was the uh, Nailbiter, I think. And, um, well, congrats to Life Coach. He goes with the, um, he has the first win in, the, in, in his group, and he will be waiting for the winner of, um, who's left in the group? Um, Reynard and... Yeah, uh, Tang, yeah. Yeah, the Reynard South Korean player. I think Life Coach played excellent in this series, yeah. I think yeah. he just, uh, he has more experience than, uh, both in the booth and just in general in tournaments now. So I think the experience just came through for him in the end, taking the match 3-1. But it could have been wide open, I suppose. There, were, there was maybe one mistake made by Life Coach when yeah. he traded the um, Harrison Jones into the Sylvanas before attacking the, with the Vulture. Yeah, but it looked like that was some sort of you know, uh, uh, malfunction. Some, yeah, yeah. Some, some, something yeah. happened. And I have to, uh, I have to um, ask him about this situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's... That's it. That's the end of the match. First match of the Group C. And I'm really curious what the analysts have to say about this match. Yes. Yeah, going to yeah. throw them back to them. But uh, coming up then after that, it's going to be Reynard versus Tang. So uh, over to you guys.
right, thank you so much, Lothar and Caldi. Uh, a really long match, man. Live coach never fails to deliver on uh, the length of uh, the length of the series as well as the quality of play. But he takes the series three one over Bunny Muffins, making uh, making me look pretty good. I picked the live coach. You also did too, Aqua. So you're feeling pretty good, Nimsh. What happened there? Why did Bunny Muffins drop the series in your opinion? We heard Lothar and Caldi talk a little bit about it. Oh yeah. Um, in your opinion, what happened? Well, um, as, as I stated before. Um, in the beginning, like Bunny Muffins could surprise Life Coach. Like he could bring really creative decks, uh, and Life Coach will struggle to adjust. But uh, mm -hmm. what we've seen from um, Bunny Muffin was like mostly cookie cutters. Uh, we've seen him uh, playing Paladin. Well, he did play the Cog, uh, Cog Hammer, which is not that standard. Like some people still play it, and um, it was super surprising. But it was a bit different. Uh, not different enough to surprise Life Coach. Life Coach was able to adjust and uh, and play the series perfectly. Where Bunny Muffins struggled a bit. I, I, I mean, think at some he point. brought Paladin and Warrior. Those are. Two, I mean, two classes that we don't actually normally see in the current metagame, even though they are standard decks. Uh, those are two classes, like, especially Warrior. How often are you seeing Warrior nowadays? Even though it feels like it could be a strong pick if everyone's bringing like Rogue and Hunter. Uh, in this scenario where you know some people are going to be bringing Zoo, especially with Zoo that's a little bit more problematic, uh, it's really interesting to see if it works out for him. Maybe it could be an overall metagame call. I'm not sure. What do you think, Aqua? Well, Druid's really popular right now, which is a problem for Warrior. So yeah, that's, exactly. that's something that can probably take a lot of players like not to bring Warrior. But we do have the Grim Patron Warrior as well. That's been uh, showing up no in one, some No tournaments. one's bringing it, though. But no yet. one's bringing it. You not yet, not yet. But it's a really broken deck as soon as someone realizes it. Especially against Paladin. You beat exactly. the pants off of Paladin because they can't ever pressure you. And then just get Grim Patrons against 1-1s. One it's awesome. I mean, it's, yeah, like I said, it beats Paladin. It beats anything you can trade with well or, or, right. or stay keep their uh, patrons alive. Like Mech Mage does mm. fairly well against Zoo. It can, Zoo's quite popular now, yeah, so maybe right. Patron Warrior is the way to go instead of Control. But, yeah, I f well, we looked at Zosis lineup earlier, and it looked like it was there to counter Warrior. And Bunny Muffins is the player who brought Warrior, and um. it didn't, didn't work out. So I don't know. It's just... Didn't really do a lot that game. And of course, uh, the Paladin always has a good matchup against Warrior. It can kind of grind it out. And looking at Life Coach's Paladin, he had everything. He had the Kalfazard, very greedy. He had a Sky Golem with a Dr. Boom, another, another greedy choice. So yeah. he had everything he needed to beat that, win that game, pretty much. Yeah, but Super like, grindy. coming to the beginning of the series, I think like Bunny Muffin um, did match up versus Life Coach really poorly with the, with the decks. Like the first game, Paladin versus Druid being a very difficult match and a very, very difficult um, game to play where, um, well, he didn't get the cards he needed. Like, um, you either go aggro or you go control, where he actually went one for one against Druid. Again, a, a really greedy Druid from Life Coach with yeah, Nourish. And, uh, Nourish. And he'd even use Nourish for card advantage. He used Nourish for the mana gain so that he can uh, out-tempo his opponents in the following turns. But... Uh, it didn't even matter the fact that he was down in cards at one point. He fought really efficiently, like you said. It's like you were saying that eventually the Druid will just outvalue the Paladin, and it, and Life Coach was able to sustain that long where the Paladin was looking pretty decent, and then he was trying to out-trade him, and then he lost hand advantage, and Life Coach was sat with everything in his hand, Dr. Boom, Sludge Belchers, for example, and the Paladin just fell short on mm -hmm. any way to deal with anything Druid had. Life Coach is so patient as a player. Like, he's so patient, he's waiting for the, for the rope. Even if he finishes his fault he's process, waiting for the rope. he's still waiting for the rope because he's you like, think he right. deliberately says, I'm going to make my decision once the rope starts. I think he does. Like he wants oh to take all the all the time he has, and you know the viewers they they want the rope. They I mean, want he to missed an attack, right? Was yeah, Solanus he five damage. because of it? He missed five damage. Either that, or he was really playing around something that's next level, but he just ran out of time. <laughs> or maybe that was sure. just BM. Maybe it's just BM. The fact that he was winning so convincingly with handlock that it didn't matter against Paladin, which was again a great matchup for Life Coach. Handlock mm -hmm. versus Paladin is definitely very tough. Any plays stuck out to you guys in terms of uh, something that was interesting, worth noting, or uh, something that could have happened differently for the entire series outcome or game outcome? I like the situation where um, Life Coach had uh, Twilight Drake on board, and Twilight Drake had one health, and uh, he could silence his own Twilight Drake, which is just uh, crazy and insane as a, as a line of play. Mm. I'm not sure if he if he did see it or if he opted to not do it because right. he still um, the, the match still went in his favor. But the fact that you can silence your Twilight Drake for the Shadow Flame to have more value was actually pretty interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, all of the was was Harrison Jones, and he had the Mountain Giant drawn perfectly. Oh yeah, uh, it's one of those things where. You know, your 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 focus like this owl silence has to go on Tyrion, or like I know my opponent might be playing bigger threats like Sylvanas. 
Uh, I don't want to use my owl on this, especially if he's only running a few of them. He is running more traditional hand locks, so I'd have to imagine he runs two owls. But some lists now, Warlock, that are more control-oriented only have one owl. So really interesting that that ended up being a different play. But I think the Mountain Giant was still really powerful. It killed like three minions and has some really good play. I think uh, the not playing owl for life coach pretty much sums up life coach because he was he had the owl, he had that play probably available to him, and he probably knew it. But he was like you were saying. Tyrion's going to come along, and I'm the type of player who can just sit back and wait for these right. things. And it's though that his style of play, very conservative, very patient, that wins him these games. And keeping that owl was probably along his kind of play style. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait. And this owl's going to get more value than just a more optimized Shadow Flame at this turn. I mean, I'm going to have to wait. This Tyrion is going to be a problem once at some point. So he was thinking about that probably. Did he go to rope that turn? <laughs> uh, probably, I think yeah, so. And possibly. then he slammed down the mountain giant and then waits in face. And pretty much it. Uh, Life Coach did end up also having some greedy moves. A few of us were agreeing that he was playing very optimistically, but ended up panning out for him. And now he's 3-1 in the winner's match where he'll play against Raynad versus Tang. That's going to be coming up on stream, guys. So we're going to take a few minutes, and when we come back, we're going to resume Group C here at Gfinity Spring Cup number two.